sauce cast, baby. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen out there in internet land, welcome to SauceCast, which is typically mm -hmm. the sexiest financial show in the world, which it could still be today. Yes. Uh, today's going to be a different kind of show, a little bit more uh, serious topics, a um, little more serious guests. Mm. We have um, uh, some people here who have made them names themselves across all spectrums, political arena, business arena, more political arena. I don't even know what I am. Yeah, I don't even know what you are. Red Pill, <laughs> yeah. Vegas, I don't even know Air Force, yeah. um, and OnlyFans. Um, Not only, OnlyFans. Only feed. <laughs> only feed. Only feed. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, uh, why you go throw it out there like well, that? You know, as we say here on the Sauce Guys, sexiest financial show in the world, we want to see you guys get paid, laid, and do it your way. You know this. Nothing wrong with that. Um, this is where finance meets romance. We're going to get into business. We're going to get into relationships. Relationships aren't just dating relationships. They're interpersonal relationships business relationships, uh, work relationships, all that and above. And today is going to be a little bit more of a culture, societal conversation, America today. Some may say America first. Hmm. Some I may like say that. that, yeah. Okay. With that being said, uh, Nick's here. Nick F. Yeah. Nick F. <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nat D. Uh, hey. Amy Dangerfield. Amy D. Amy D. MS. Okay. Catalina. Um, so in all seriousness, uh, we'll have fun on the show. We'll debate on the show. We'll have discourse on the show. We might even laugh a little bit on the show. Should, Keep it should light. I, should it... I not use my real name because I'm too controversial? You're very controversial. Some you're other saying? people are. Okay. But uh, Nick, I want to thank you for being here. We had a Zoom call uh, less than a week ago this weekend. Yeah. Um, one of us got up around noon and joined the Zoom call. I don't know which one it was, but... Um, we all made it on the call, and uh, we had a very candid conversation. I said, listen, we've been in touch with your team uh, for maybe a year now. Uh, right. Tenrio, met him at the vault last year. He said, hey, you should look into our friend Nick. We said, okay, we'll consider it. It's been going back and forth. We eventually got on a call, and I said, look, man, let me candid with you. Thank you for doing this. You said, thank you for being here. I said, we're taking a risk having you on the platform. You said, I know. I said, um, you're having a risk coming on us. We're having a bigger risk uh, bringing you on our platform. But um, we understand that risk. Um, and we understand what we're doing. We are a free speech platform. We believe in people having conversations. Um, at the same time, there's not an endorsement of many of the opinions that you've put out there. You'll have to defend your own positions, as everyone will in life. Um, here's, um, if you may, I'm going to take a second. Some of the things you've said before so that for the audience has, uh, is familiar with what you've said. Uh, some of the people that have been on our shows before um, align, maybe not align. Um, and then we're going to have a full-on conversation. You're going to have plenty of time to talk. You guys have plenty of time to talk. I'll also introduce our lovely guests on that side of the room. Thank you for being so patient. Um, so Nick F., um, we've had Alex Jones on the podcast. What's your relationship with him, by the way, right now? Um. Well, I think we're cool, but we have okay. a little disagreement. I've heard. Uh, so we had a great time with him. We had dinner with him. We had an awesome time with him. Um, uh, awesome podcast with him. One of the bigger podcasts we've done. Shout out to PBD Podcast, if you didn't see that one, guys. Um, I, I would say that he's called many names, but you're called even worse names. It's true. Okay. Um, Charlie Kirk has been on our podcast. Mm. Um, Turning Point USA. I think he's a super sharp young guy. Um, you guys have had some exchange of words as well. We've had beef. Okay. Yeah. These are guys all sort of in the MAGA world. Would you classify yourself as MAGA oh, still? absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. So these are guys in your world who you have also had beef with. And it, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, their mouth. I don't think they want you in their world. I don't know. There's another person, Sebastian Gorka, mm. who is as MAGA as it gets. Yes? I don't think so. Okay. Well, he signed the <laughs> bank vault, Sebastian Gorka, MAGA. <laughs> so wow. that, that was his thing. Um, not a fan of yours. We've had Roger Stone. We had Paul Manafort on. But um, I'm just lay, letting the audience know some of the people we've had on that are in that world mm. who you can speak on throughout the podcast. Uh, another couple things um, that will bring up some of your quotes. And then uh, we'll also discuss what a term I'm quite frankly not familiar with. Um, but I did my due diligence. The term groiper. Am I saying that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. 
Fans of America First, which is a platform that you work with or you started. Well, it's my show. Your yeah. show. There it is. Um, welcome to the Sauce Cast, lady. My show. Uh, a this is quote unquote what I read. White nationalist and far right activist, notable for their attempts to introduce far right politics into mainstream conservatism. Nick calls them Christian conservatives. Did I summarize that? Correctly? Well, yeah, I mean, they call me a white nationalist, but okay. I don't call myself that. Gotcha. So you'll defend that today, yeah. no doubt. Um, last but not least, here's some of the quotes you've said. You let me know if you never said these quotes. Okay. These are the quotes that are attributed to you, and then we'll meet our guests, and we'll have a very uh, high-level intellectual conversation as much as we can. Nick Fuentes, um, regarding race, segregation was, quote-unquote, better for them, and it's better for us. It's better in general. White people founded this country. This country wouldn't exist without white people. People are done being bullied. Got it. Jews, by the way, full disclosure for everyone out there watching YouTube, just so you understand, I'm Jewish. I'm hosting someone that may or may not be a fan of the Jews, but I'm above the fray. We're having this conversation. Nima is also Jewish. Anyone else here Jewish on the panel? <laughs> Nima, you're... I was, all, you're I, I was called Jewish this morning on Twitter. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but yeah. you are Italian. I'm Italian. I'm Colombian. I'm actually, Colombian. Yeah, I'm Protestant. I'm okay. Pro I was in a Christian ministry. Yeah. I'm sorry for mischaracterizing Oh, no, it's you. totally fine. But, Michael, you're going to have plenty time. of time to explain your situation. Uh, so for the Jews, uh, I believe in an organized Jewry is extremely influential in the United States and pushes America toward an open society, liberalism and internationalism for their own benefit. Okay? We will make Jews die in a holy war. Well, I didn't say that. Okay, that's not something you said. Hmm. Got it. Um, I don't see Jews as Europeans. I don't see them as part of Western civilization, particularly because they are not Christians. Yes. That's true, because we're Jewish. Right. Right. Uh, women's rights. Um, I don't support women's rights. I don't support LGBT rights. I believe in race and gender essentialism. Uh, you, you mentioned overturning Roe versus Wade was the advent of a Catholic... Taliban rule in a good way. Um, you had mentioned the tidal wave of white identity uh, coming back to America. And our lovely friends at CNN, we just had Chris Cuomo on, who may or may not be a fan of CNN these days. Uh, I thought he was a great guy. We had an awesome time hanging out with him doing a podcast. You said, allegedly, I want people that run CNN to be arrested and deported or hanged. Death penalty. Death penalty. Got oh, yes. it. Let me, let me correct that. I said globalist, not... Gotcha. Necessarily right. CNN. So for the most but part... You're saying, you're saying hanged in due process, though. Yes. You're just not random. Exactly, oh, yeah. So that not makes not it vigilante hanged. Okay, yeah. Just, just want to clarify that for That's you. That's right, Understood. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, well, here's what we'll do. We have plenty of time for topics. We're going to get into a bunch of stuff. Um, here's how we'll start. We'll start the same as any show. Um, what I typically ask is um, to ask our guests... The same two questions every show. What do you do for work? And what's your relationship status? And then from there, we will have a <laughs> candid conversation about America today. So, um, Nick F., thank uh, you for being here. Yeah. Um, with all those quotes and all that uh, bio, what do you do for work? And uh, what is your relationship status, sir? Well, thanks for having me. You're Good welcome. to be here. And uh, I'm a live streamer. That's how I make a living, and my relationship status is single. Okay, single. How mm -hmm. long have you been single? My whole life. I'm, uh, well, I'm celibate because I'm Catholic. Celibate. So right. what does that mean exactly? You're waiting till marriage? Correct. Yeah, okay. I'm going to wait and uh, have sex with my wife. That's the Nice. Call. My wife. Uh, <laughs> how soon do you see yourself getting married? Uh, probably within the next five years. Okay. You're willing to go to age 30 without losing your virginity, potentially? Yeah, potentially. Oh, wow. And that's because of your deep faith? Yeah. Respect to you. Are you actively dating? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Not dating whatsoever? No, okay. not really. Not right. seriously. Um, well, at some point we'll have a discussion on, you know, the dating world. But anyway, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy. Amy. Hello. How are you? Welcome back. Thank you so much. Thanks Let me read me. some of the quotes you've said recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, there's oh, some shit. spicy ones. Oh, oh. nerd. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks. No, no, that's you got me. my bad. That's Wait, easy oh, no. E. That's my bad. Yeah. Right oh, no. My yeah, bad, Amy. Um, welcome, Amy, back Thank to the show. You. you know, I'm a big fan of yours. You've big been on yours. multiple shows. I think you're classy. Thank 
Thank whether you. or not you're really an Aussie. We had, you had an argument oh with, a, my goodness. with a trans woman on the show the other day. Yeah, it was heated, that was, went viral. Yeah, that was fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, give us your story and your um, how you make your money and your relationship status. So I do high ticket sales. Uh, we kind of went into this a little bit last time. I may actually be doing high ticket sales for him. Possibly. We, hey, soon. listen, we have a, we'll Did see. we just broker a deal? Maybe we may have. Hey, but listen, you know what? Know. That's what us Jews do. That's what I was... <laughs> see, you said it. I didn't. See? That's what I'm saying. I didn't say that either. That's true. <laughs> Nick, I'm, listen. I said it. And, uh, uh, go ahead. Relationship status is single. Got it. Okay. And celibate? Not celibate. Waiting till marriage? Uh, no, I don't think so. Dating? Uh, not yet, no. What religion just, are you? I came out of like a... I'm Christian. Okay. For sure. Nationalist? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't We'll work on so. that. Michael Sartain. <laughs> hey. Good to see you again. How you doing, brother? I think you're a stud. What do I call you every time I see you? Uh, the coolest nerd. The coolest nerd yeah. I know. Actually, I say the nerdiest, coolest guy I the know. But you just, cool you yeah. know, less words is better. Yeah. So, Michael, it's great to have you here. Yeah. You're a very smart, sharp guy who also likes to... Have a good time. Mm, yeah. What's your celibacy situation these days? Uh, I have a I have a girlfriend, and okay. she sometimes has a girlfriend. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so not more religion. like King David, King Solomon. Okay. You know, gotcha. Yeah. Biblical. Yeah. So, and what do you do for work? Uh, I uh, I I have a male uh, performance coaching program called Men of Action, and then I have a podcast. I have like four podcasts that I do. One of them with uh, Rolla Tomasi. Okay. Uh, Michael Sartain podcast, which yes. I will I will stay state definitively the most detailed interview of Adam Sosnick that has Thank ever you. been done. My life on, bio will be on that. Yes. So, yes. yes. Like, I will say that you do research like no one else. Yeah. Well, I actually, actually, that. I got that from PBD because whenever yeah. I watch you guys interview Andrew Tate, I'm like, he's got facts up. Oh yeah. And that's where I was motivated. I was like, because I'm not famous. There's nothing really that special about me, but I can out research other people, and so that's yeah. why that's why I try to do on my podcast. I like that. You know, you might yeah. not be the smartest guy in the room, and I'd be the best I looking guy in the room. Em. But you can outwork I everybody. I can outwork him. That's what I learned you in know, the military. Yeah. You're sort of it's a humble brag because you are six foot two, good looking, millionaire. But you know. You outwork those guys, bro. I do outwork them. Respect yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, and how familiar are you with Nick, by the way? Or how familiar are, are you, Nick, with his colleague Rolo? How familiar this this situation? Well, I'm not super familiar actually with Rolo. I got okay. uh, dropped into a panel with him with Pearl, and he didn't really like me, so we had a little back and forth. But I don't mind him. I think he's interesting. And uh, Michael, I've seen on whatever i've seen you on the okay, whatever yeah. podcast and i actually watch you i think you were on fresh and fit was it last night last night yeah so i, I caught you on fresh and fit last night and uh mm -hmm. so i've seen some of your stuff yeah yeah uh with nick i mean obviously i knew he was gonna be on the panel so i, I did watch uh a bunch of de uh debates i actually had dinner with destiny last night and mm -hmm. we talked about it but yeah it was just that that's all i've seen because i mean a lot of your stuff has been deplatformed which mm -hmm. by the way i disagree with some of the stuff you have to say i absolutely do not stand by the idea of you being deplatformed or sneak up being deplatformed i think mm -hmm. uh, one of the problems is and we can go into this oh we're going to uh, go into it yeah a lot yes. of the things he discusses people won't even do further research on because they're afraid to, to touch these topics so i i am very much against the idea of deplatforming especially with people i disagree with well thank you for saying that because that's sort of the premise of what we're doing here today um, I don't believe in deplatforming unless you're inciting violence, you're right? right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and that's a conversation we are going to have today. Uh, I'd also like to thank the lovely Catalina Law for joining us, Yay. the classy potential congresswoman <laughs> out of Illinois. Yes. Soon to be someplace else potentially. Yes. Okay. By the way, you're from Illinois. That's right. Yeah. You're uh, how far? About uh, 60 miles northwest okay, of gotcha. the city. Gotcha. Of Chicago. So, Catalina, let's hear yes. your story. Uh, my sister what are you doing I... for work these days? <laughs> my sister and, and all I... the guys in the chat want to know your relationship status. <laughs> uh, my sister and I have a startup in the gut microbiome space and relationship status. Uh, <laughs> single. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Yep. <laughs> single. I don't know. On July all 4th, the, I, How about all of the above? All of the above. <laughs> On July 4th, I did try to make a referral connection. You did. Yes. With a very handsome, nice man. Yeah. Very Not smart. myself. I thank you, but you know. <laughs> thank you, Adam. Friend of ours. Yes. It's, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, we may, we potentially made a uh, a uh, business arrangement right here. Maybe I can make a uh, relationship arrangement. <laughs> yes. Uh, do a mitzvah. So, finance, romance, boom. All right. The Jews were winning. <laughs> um, we'll see if we can make that happen. Okay. <laughs> and you live where right now? Uh, Illinois. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, the man too cool to wear pants, 
<laughs> because his breeze needs to be breathing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Alpha King Nima is in the house. How you doing, Nima? Good. Thank you for having me, man. I'm thank excited. you for being here. Thank you. Did you think we were actually doing a podcast? You were excited to be here. Uh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't sure it could actually happen. But yeah. To be excited. fair, I don't wear pants half the time either. So like, <laughs> but on a podcast. Totally yeah. Um, <laughs> but when you're that guy looking at tan and, uh, oh, you know, you got to show it off. You've been, uh, you've been <laughs> I live on yachts, Ger- I assume, this summer. What have you been doing? I mean, I live in Germany, so I'm okay. enjoying the warm weather while I can. You Germany? Know. You live yeah. in Germany? Wow. Well, my wife's German. Your wife's so, German. Yeah. Okay. But I'm Jewish. So, you're Jewish. You know, yeah, there you go. So, uh, but a serial entrepreneur over 20 years, uh, 42 years old, married, have a daughter. Um, yeah. That's my relationship status. Entrepreneur, what's your major focus when it comes to business? Uh, I actually like to lend money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The irony. <laughs> the irony. Let's just go there. Gotcha. Fuck it, let's just go there right now. Come okay. on. Okay, usury. So that's not usury. Yes. Yo, okay. Usury is, is, is disproportionate amounts of interest being charged. The Catholic Church allowed for people to lend money in the 16th century. Yes. Usury is when it's disproportionately high. Good to know. Yes. Thank you. That um, will be a topic we'll be discussed today. I do like shorts, I, I, you know, I, I do like shorts, but honestly, my dick's too long you know, <laughs> for pants okay, nowadays. There we anyway. go. All right. All right. Just tuck yeah. it into your shoe and keep, keep it. it moving. How long have you been married? Uh, actually, less than a year, but I've been with my, my wife for several years now, since my 30s. So. Okay. Sort, sort of odd that I'm actually like married and uh, faithful to one woman and pretty traditional family values in that sense. Why is it guy, odd? Uh, for, for a guy in like this niche of... Uh, he's, he's not wrong. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I, especially, especially being faithful to your wife, because without men being faithful to their wives, if men were faithful to their wives, that would solve a big part of the degeneracy in our society. So um, good to hear. Well, we'll have that discussion yeah. today. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, let's. Uh, well, Malik is here. Um, Malik. Uh, yep. Yeah. Malik, say hi to the camera. What's, What's up? What's up? Give, it, give us your age, how many felonies you've committed, what? and uh, <laughs> what. No, I'm, he's a good man right there. I'm 26, no yeah. felonies. Okay. Uh, I'm in a relationship, and I'm on the production team here at Value Tainment. I do a little bit of everything. Okay. I was doing audio for PBD Podcast the other day. Now I'm behind the desk on SauceCast. So You're a good sure man. You're a good heart. I'll tell the story about Malik real quick. One day, Malik always has a great attitude. Always has a great attitude. Um, and one day, he seemed a little down. Uh, we were in PBD studio, and I was like, what's up, man? How you doing, Malik? You good? You're like... Yeah, everything's good. I'm like, scale of one to 10, how you doing? I'm thinking two, three. He's like, an eight. I'm like, an eight? I'm like, you seem like you're, he's like, every day above ground is a good day. I was like, oh, damn, Malik. Oh, no, Malik. So respect to you, you know, I have a big uh, uh, fan of yours. We've done some man on the street interviews. Uh, welcome, to, welcome to being here. At any point that I want your inside, you're comfortable weighing in? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Last but not least, we have the lovely, the Hello. talented, <laughs> the um, Hooked on Phonics Central work for her, Natalia hello. Del Valle. Hello, hello, hello Hi, everyone. Now. How are you doing today? The co-host, yes. Nick. Have you nice met Nick yet? Uh, yeah, just before the show. Shake yes. his hand, Nat. Be friendly. Hey. Hi. Thanks, Nick. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Appreciate yes. that. I'm excited for today. Why doesn't everybody episode? shake hands real quick? Just the people next to you. Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, it's not real, so it's okay. Hey, right? it's, like church. it's like when you go to church. Yeah, a lot of there we touching. Go. A lot Malik, of touching. I feel you. Um, oh, Nat. Awesome. So let me make an announcement before you do. By the way, we're going to mm-hmm. keep the chat on for another 10 minutes, and then we're going to be doing super chats only. So if you have questions or you have comments, put it in the super chat. The higher will be read first. You've got about 10 minutes to do your commenting, and then we're going straight super chat only. Awesome. Cool. Cool beans. Very cool. Great. Nat, do your thing. Awesome. One. And then we'll get started. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in today's episode on SauceCast. We're super excited. We have a very diverse panel today. It's going to be a lot of great discussion. Um, I always say it, and you guys know it. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff, because today is going to be very interesting. A lot of uh, different topics that we usually mm-hmm. don't cover on Sauce, so I'm super excited. Um, and I will be reading all your super chats, so if you you know, put those chats in there, and um, I'll be reading them. Be nice. <laughs> yes. um, and we're ready to get started. Cool. Uh, here's where I'd like to start, guys. Uh, let's start macro and work our way down to any particular topics and issues. But here's an article from the Wall Street Journal that was pretty shocking. This was a few months ago. We have covered it on PBD Podcast. But I feel very appropriate for it to be a general discussion today. Typically, we talk about 
male self-improvement, get your money right, get your mind right, get your body right, get your personality right, get your game right, and when you're ready to find women in your life, whether that's, you know, celibacy and then finding marriage or having a girlfriend and my girl got a girlfriend, Michael Sartain, uh, or happily married former uh, international playboy, Nima, happily married with kids, or lovely ladies who are looking for men in their lives, whatever floats your boat. But that's kind of what we do on the show. So, but, the, but one thing I will say, uh, and I'll speak for everybody on the show, I love America. Yeah. Okay? Is anybody here that doesn't love America on this show? Great. Um, here's an article from the Wall Street Journal. Can we pull up that title, Malik? Okay, so the Wall Street Journal, America pulls back from the values that wants to find it, right? So America's, American values are in steep decline. So you can show the images and I'll read this. The Wall Street Journal poll finds American priorities that help define the national character for generations, such as patriotism, religion, having children, and involvement in the community are all receding in importance. Uh, the only priority that has grown in importance in the, port in the past quarter century, anyone want to guess? Materialism? Money. Money? Not Money. bad. Thank you, Amy. I told That's you also a very, uh, very American thing. Yeah. Yes. You know, capitalism, baby. So younger Americans in particular um, place low importance on these values, Gen Z, for, in, for instance, many of which were central to the lives of their parents, i.e. having children, Right. 23% um, of adults under age 30, which are the younger cohort of millennials and the older Gen Zs. By the way, are you Gen Z or millennial? Yes, Gen Z. You're the oldest Gen Z? Yeah, I'm kind of like right at the cutoff. How old are you again? I'm 24. 24, that's 1998? Uh, yeah, 98. Don't tell anybody. I don't know if anybody's listening. That's the year I graduated high school. But moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm two <laughs> years older than you. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And what you 99. Okay. So we're all we're all in our early 40s. The oldest person in this Yeah, you old room. ass, Mike. You look old. <laughs> Next to the youngest. How old are you by the way, Amy? I'm 28 in like 3 days. Oh, oh happy, happy birthday. birthday. There you go. Okay, Catalina, I'm, you're I just turned 30. That's right. Happy birthday. The dirty 30 and Nat somehow is younger than you even though she's uh, according to her birth uh, date 5 years older than you or your age. Um Anyway, you're still somehow 21, 21 is what I'm saying. 21. All right, so only 23% is under age 30. 23% are having children, or has said that having children was very important, and 23% that patriotism was very important to them personally. 23%. We all just established we love America. So compared with 59% of seniors, right? So it's seniors loving America. Gen Z, not so much. Anyway, last but not least, and then we'll open up the conversation. The survey also finds that sharply divided political party over social trends, such as the push for racial diversity in businesses and the use of gender neutral pronouns, something I know you feel very strongly about, Nima. Um, Republicans and Democrats had sharp differences on these issues, with just over half of Republicans saying society had gone too far in the wokeness and promoting racial and ethnic diversity, and three quarters of Republicans are saying society has gone too far in accepting people who are trans. Gender. Last thing, pull up the article on patriotism, uh, just so we get this party started. American patriotism, which was part of the Wall Street Journal article. Here's some further evidence for you. Only 18% of young adults, we just identified under 30, are extremely proud to be American. All right, 18% of aged 18 to 34 in this instance claim to be extremely proud to be American, while 85% express strong national pride in 2013. 2013. So in the last 10 years. It's gone from 85% to 18% in America today. You know what's strange is that if you have... Hold on, Mike. Highlighting a significant decline in patriotism among the younger generation, Republicans led the national pride with 60% expressing extreme pride compared to Democrats at 29% and independents at 33%. Clear partisan divide. So with all that being said, that's what's going on in the Wall Street Journal and the polls today. Um, Nick, what is going on in America today where there's a lack of our traditional family values, lack of love for country. Uh, what is going on? Has the American dream changed, or is it still alive? Well, <clears throat> I think the American dream is dead. You know, I agree with Trump when he said that, and I think that's actually a separate question, because I think the American dream is really more about what people think about, which is opportunity and jobs and quality of life, and I think that's separate from family and, like you said, traditional values, patriotism, 
I think that you can't talk about these trends without talking about, at the same time, the secularization of America. That's the biggest problem. Because without religion, without a genuine fear of God, there's really, I mean, the word value doesn't even have a moral connotation. You know, where would values come from? Where would ethics come from if they didn't come from God, if they didn't come from the church? People can pick and choose them, but then it's a matter of preference. It's totally subjective. They're also then not binding. If you don't believe in God, and therefore a judgment, and therefore accountability, then you can feel whatever you want is right or wrong, but there's nothing that actually binds you. There's really no incentive to follow it. So I think that when you look at these things, a lot of people think about it in terms of we're not getting the fruits of religion. And what I mean by that is people can say that religion produces a better society, maybe a richer, safer, more uh, decent society, and they want those things, but they don't want to talk about what produces them, which is religion, which is God-fearing. So, I mean, I, I think that's the biggest aspect of it. And, you know, people in society today just don't even think about that. It's not even in their consciousness anymore. About religion specifically? About religion, yeah. Okay, and why do you think that is? Well, I think that uh, it's been happening over time. It used to be the case that religion was, it was a community thing, and it was passed down from the parents. But this really started about 100 years ago that people rapidly dropped their religion. And I think it has to do with the uh, materialism. I think that life is really good. And the, the better the things are in the world, the less people think about death, the less people think about the afterlife, the less people think about the problem of evil. And so as the amusements and the distractions and the recreation has gotten better, I think people think a lot less about, about those things. Because those things are really, I think, the drivers of a religious inquiry, a religious so faith. So you said the American dream is dead. What's your biggest complaint with America today? We don't make anything. That's the biggest problem. We don't make anything. And uh, you, know, you said in that article, the only thing that people value more today is money. And Michael said, well, that's part of the American dream. And I agree. But maybe you guys will agree with this because you guys are business minded. I think a lot of young people today, they think about money, but the economy in America isn't, it's not really about money. Money represents value. And value is, of course, how we measure wealth. And wealth is something that is created when we work, when we make things. And so I think there's a lot of people these days that they want to get rich in bed on their phone. You know, people are Googling like, how do I start a business? What they really are looking for is how do I make money without leaving my bed or putting my phone mm -hmm. down? Mm -hmm. And they're eager to get money to buy things, but they're not eager to do the things that create value mm -hmm. that the money represents. And so there was an interesting study that came out this year comparing like what's going on in the Ukraine war, comparing America to Russia. And it talked about how we have no productive sector. We don't make anything. Our, our industry, our agriculture, our manufacturing, construction, it's 15% of our economy. The rest is services. And China makes things. China, mm -hmm. it's more than half is productive. Germany makes things. A quarter of their economy is productive. We don't make anything. We don't do anything. And so I, I think now it's like the Klaus Schwab WEF article. You're going to own nothing and be happy. It's going to be right. a renter society. Everything is a service, all the capital owned by a few people, and everybody will be basically a debt slave as long as La they can. Last uh, thing, and then I want to get Michael and Neiman, the ladies, jump in. Goods and services, those are the two items that essentially establish GDP, right? That's the inflation when it goes up and down, the, the increase in goods and services. No secret that manufacturing jobs have been shipped overseas, whether it's trade agreements, everything that's going on with China. Um, you say we don't make anything, but we certainly... Um, service a lot of things we, we you know american culture is responsible for great things in this world only in 2013 american pride was what uh 85 85 percent so but we've been shipping jobs overseas for decades now so there must be more than just that we don't make anything so what do you th go, go deeper if you would what do you think is is happening beyond that well I, like I said, I think the American dream, I think that specifically, do has to, that specifically does have to do with making things and has to do with creating a better quality of life. When people talk about, I want to pursue the great American dream, typically it's this idea of I want to leave my children with a better life than mm -hmm. I had. And I guess if you could take it deeper, it's not just about generating wealth to make things to have a better material outlook the whole society. It's not just the private wealth 
It's not just privately that children are poorer than their parents. It's even the public wealth. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing about wealth. Society's real wealth is in its behaviors, the things that people do. Like, for example, Nigeria or another, you know, Niger, which there's stuff going on there. These African countries aren't just less wealthy because they have less stuff or less money. They're less wealthy because they're not safe because the people don't have the same mm -hmm. kind of habits and, and culture that we have. And so I think across the board, people are leaving the society in a worse shape because they're not being good custodians because they don't care. You know, gotcha. they don't love their country and Michael, they're letting it go. Michael, uh, you served in the U.S. military. Mm -hmm. You're a proud American. Yes. You were, give your, your background real quick. You were uh, out there flying planes and yeah, throwing things I, up. I flew, uh, I was a tanker nav in a uh, KC-135. I flew special ops for five years and then I did counter intel work for two years. Okay. Yeah. So you're a proud American. Yes. Okay. When you hear these numbers, patriotism, family, family values, community service, you hear some of the things Nick yeah. is saying. How do you process this? So as a, pro first off, I want to get to a couple things Nick said. Uh, as a Protestant, uh, remember I'm saying this as a Protestant, atheists don't run around just murdering each other, right? I understand that people who do not have religious values, they don't solely ascribe their morality strictly from Judeo-Christian rules. The Buddhists have rules, the Hindi have rules, um, the Islam has rules, Judaism has rules, and Christianity has rules. And some people who are atheists, they don't necessarily go around and just like break laws. They have a sense of morality. Morality can be gotten from places other than religion. And I'm saying this as a religious person. Okay, mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Second thing I was going to say is... How often do you go to church, by the way? Uh, a couple times a year. Maybe four okay. times a year. Nick, how often do you go? Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Beautiful. Uh, the other thing uh, I was You guys, by the way? I go to church quite frequently. Frequently? Yeah. yeah. Amy? Yeah, once every month or so. Once a month? Catalina? Pretty frequently. Like once a month, once a what? Yeah, once a month. Nima, how often are you going to a temple I, or synagogue <clears throat> or church? I, I pray twice a day, but I don't go to synagogue Got it. often. Okay, just okay. establish that. Go ahead, Michael. All right, uh, Romania and Nigeria. Romania is one of the most corrupt countries in, in Europe, and Nigeria is a... Is, I know, we is, have a friend there that we yeah, had to visit on house for sure. arrest, if you're familiar and, with that guy. And uh, Nigeria is one, uh, is one of the more dangerous countries in the world, and in those two places, they're... A percentage of the population that is devoutly Christian is much higher than it is in the United States, and those places are more dangerous than here. And so I don't necessarily think it is, again, I'm saying this as a Protestant, I don't think that the answer to everything is a one-to-one -one correlation with religion, right? Other people who don't believe what I believe can still be safe and moral, love their children, and be productive members of society. When it goes to the other part about you know making things in this country, you talk about Russia. Ru about it used to be about 22% of Russia's GDP was petroleum. Now it's about 18%, obviously, because you know not as many people are buying their petroleum. I don't know if necessarily that makes us any different from the United States because we export more petroleum than them. And secondly, one of the second biggest export exports is their S-400 surface-to-air missiles, their Sukhois, their MiGs, and. Um, and, and their, you know, just ma mainly their, their military arsenal. Well, the United States actually manufactures those in the United States as well. We, we do more of that than Russia. So I'm not necessarily saying that we don't build anything in this country, but as a lot of manufacturing jobs have left, one of the reasons why that happened is because China has currency controls on the yuan, and because of that, they keep the standard of living in their country lower so that they can get people to manufacture things for cheaper. And in the United States, because of the fact that we have a more free-flowing economy when it comes to money, and one of the main things about the United States is that all the liquidity for all the capital markets is mm -hmm. here in the U.S. It's not even close to anywhere else. That liquidity has caused us to have a higher standard of living in this country. And that higher standard of living is the reason why a lot of people don't want to take cheaper manufacturing jobs. In China, like I said before, what should have happened is as they continue to make more and more stuff, their standard of living should have risen, but it didn't. And that is a function of... Um, uh, that's a function of a, a government that has let, let has allowed currency controls to keep people well, poor. Let me ask you, Michael. That, because, well, I'm saying that's why yeah. the jobs have gone there. And so the solution would be to keep us poor so that we would want to manufacture stuff here when other countries can do it cheaper. I don't see that necessarily as a solution. Gotcha. And that's where I was going with this. Yeah. A solution. So I see what you're saying. Good services, economy. I understand. You know. Um, you know the, the whole knock on on. Um, we could buy. We could choose Germany. to all buy American. We could yeah. all choose to buy American. I think that's a great idea. It'd be more expensive. For though. sure. But, but like uh, Jocko Willick, d great example. He chooses to buy American. We could do that. But yeah. the idea that we're just going to become a manufacturing economy again, mm -hmm. the problem with that is we, we have too high standard of living in this country. Right. You know, one wants to make little widgets that, uh, you know. That the, well, it's, that just, it's not that. It's that other countries are s specifically choosing okay. to keep their 
population at a lower standard of living so that they are more willing, specifically I'm talking about China, yeah. so they, they are more willing to manufacture well, things. Let's get back to America for a second, and, and I want to get you guys' opinion on this. Um, not that you guys need to provide all the solutions here, but I think part of what your solution was, was let's get back to at least having religion, nuclear family unit. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Was that sort of your solution? Well, and to even this? even more than the nuclear family, okay. it's about the extended family. Okay. You know, which is a beautiful. It takes thing. a village to raise a child, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the the parents. The what was your uh, childhood like, by the way? Uh, well, I have a twin sister, and you know, my parents they actually were in a unique situation. They both grew up very poor. Both of my parents, their fathers died when they were before they were ten years old. Okay. So they both grew up in a single mother household, and they wanted to give me and my sister a normal life because mm -hmm. both my grandfathers had different problems. And anyway, my mom quit her job to stay at home and raise me and my sister. And that really made a big impact on me uh, because of course, and we debated this on Fresh and Fit, so many women these days, they choose education, they choose career. And often they'll either defer the age at which they have kids or it's not a priority. If they do have kids, the kids are in daycare. It's, you know, they, they keep mm -hmm. their job. It's about, you know, having two incomes and everything. And, uh, you know, we took a pretty substantial cut in the household income so my mom could stay home and be there for us. Gotcha. So, would, your, would, would you say, it's sort of a loaded question, uh, would your mom say that she's happy the way she raised you? Oh, absolutely. She's happy. Absolutely. She's like, that's my son. I'm super proud. Absolutely. Okay. And your sister as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Same thing. Michael, I'm good. I, want, I wanted to just double down on that for a second. The... His solution was sort of religion. What's your solution well, to fix well, America? Actually, no, I wanted to ask Nick about something he said previously, yeah. which was you mentioned before that women are deferring having children because of education and that women should not be educated. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yep. Okay, just in general, if you are talking about high, they shouldn't even have high, we're talking South Sudan, they shouldn't even have high school education or they shouldn't have college education or what? I'm saying the priority for women should be to get married and have kids. So, but, but, you know, high school, but I, I don't think they should go to college. Okay, women should not go to college. So, you, just to be clear, your highest level of education that you're endorsing for women is high school. Yeah, and I think, by the way, okay. I think for most people, it should be high school. Okay, you're not but endorsing for, college but for even for men. for almost all women, yeah, I, don't, I think Got that it. the vast majority of women should not be going to college. Can I ask no. you, because you've talked before about the concept of a Catholic theocracy. Mm -hmm. In a Catholic theocracy, would you make it illegal for women to go to college? No. Okay, just curious. What is this, by the way? Is this like, you're like interrogating me here. No, I know I'm just, you're, I'm you're asking, prepared, you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I have a lot of respect for you. That's why I, I respect for you as a debater, and so that's why I wanted to ask you these questions. But you have said a lot of things. And I think the reason why I'm asking this question is because I did watch you one time on No Jumper, and you were one way, and I watched you on Fresh and Fit, and you're a different way, and then I watched you on America Which First. Which is what? What and are you're, the, you're what on the a, differences? You're on America First, and you are a very, very different like way. Like what? What are the differences? Well, No Jumper, I mean, you were a borderline uh, civil rights activist. I love really? everyone. Really? Well, yeah. What did I say? Oh, uh, you were just like, I love everyone. I love the Jews. That's it's what I say on my show. No. I said the same thing on my show this week. Somebody hey. came in and said, I hate black people. I said, no, no, no racial no. hatred, I, none of that. Definitely, definitely don't think that you did that, but you did make a statement on your show recently as like, hey, because we are willing to die in a holy war, we're not going to die in a holy war. We're going to make them die in a holy war. Yeah, metaphorically. That is a yeah. Well, I understand. So now it's metaphorically. But you said that on America First. You did not nope, say that on I've No Jumper. I've never encouraged well, violence oh, in real life. Okay. What, 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 Mike? Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I just, I literally watched you, Nick, uh, say that if Hitler were alive, you and him would gang up and murder a black man that was littering in your community. Do you and want I, to talk and, about and, the and full hold context on, hold on. to I, that? I just no. found that rich because in my old neighborhood in New York City, if you use the F, the, you know, the N word, they would fuck you harder than the child porn, I guess, you watch. What are you talking about? Child porn? I, I, I think your, your whole crew is packed with, with pedophiles. Who? What happened to your friend Ali? Ali is somebody I went to stop the steal with. He was there doing his own event. By the way, what is this? So is this everybody no, gangs up no, on no, me? No, 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 Let me just, let me do this. But I just don't want to, I don't want like hold Myron on, hold and Sneeko. Here's what we're going to do here, guys. Did we discuss what you're going to, what we you want to talk about? Hey, Nick, I, I, I promise you I will not make a single personal attack. We just have yeah. some things that we hold disagree on. No, and that's fine, but it's just like... No, no, no. <laughs> this just is before, like people before come even on. gets to that. No, but we could get to yeah. all of it. We could get to Ali, oh. and we could get to the statement yeah, about sure. the Holy War. For we sure. could get to both of it, but I just want to make yes. sure. So it's one versus no. two. No, 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 no. man. Yeah, but I it, just want to make sure. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But you did just, do that, you well, did do that to Relax. Destiny. Relax. You what? Did, you did do that to Destiny on Fresh and Fit with Zerka and Sneeko. You guys ganged up on What does that have to do with this? 
No, I'm just saying what's good for the goose is good for the gander, though, right? Guys, here's what we're going to do here. Okay. Wait, wait, I just want to say, you yeah. said it was one versus two. You do realize there are three other people on this <laughs> panel as well. So as much as you want women, yeah. you so know, dumb and submissive, or here, yeah. and I'll rip your face yeah. off if I have to. I, 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 you'll rip my face oh, off? Oh, I get cold. Say that? Right. Like, yeah, I, I actually, that actually, actually, hold on. Guys, Adam, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm mute everybody's mic for a second. Mute everybody's mic. Guys. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to host the show, and it's going to go the way that I want it to go. And when I call on you, you answer. This isn't a gang up situation, okay? We're gonna go over a whole host of topics, okay? Um, women, education, religion, men, society. Not sure if you heard about fat ass Lizzo, what she's got going on, virginity. We're gonna talk about Candace Owens, women, go woke, go broke, Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, there's plenty of topics, guys, all right? So answer what I'm asking you and we'll go accordingly. Nick, they're not probably happy with some of the things you've said. Look, as a Jew, as a Jew, I'm not happy. But I'm, what I'm not going to have is a gang rape on this show, metaphorically speaking. Okay? Uh, now, as long as I am with able that, to respond. With that being said, with that being said, is that cool with you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Because I already see the way this is going. Yeah. As long as everything is taken metaphorically yes. and not personally exactly. and victim mentality. So with that being said, you can turn everybody's mic on. I respect everybody here. Hey, Catalina, gang, gang rape. Grape. Grape. Gang grape. Yeah. Gang, we're, gang on you, we're on YouTube. Gang we're on YouTube. So, and, um, but could I, we cool with that? Yeah. Yes. Catalina. Yes. Uh, the initial conversation was, how can we prove American, American values? Sure. Okay. Um, you ran for Congress mm -hmm. against Adam Kinziger in his district, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you're still involved in politics. Yeah. You have a vision for America. Yes. You're a Republican. Yes. Okay. You're an advocate of Donald Trump. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Support. Um, you want to see America improve. At the same time, you may disagree with some of the things Nick has said. We all agree with disagree with some of the things he may have said. But what is it that? You, what's your vision of America? And what's your vision of America as a woman? Who? And you went to college? Uh, yes, I did. Oh wow. Miami of Ohio. Go Red Hawks. Uh. First of all, so I, I did run against Adam Kinzinger, but I also ran against a Democrat uh, once I won the nomination after the redistricting happened. And I think primarily the biggest issue that we see is the culture wars are now, anytime the far left progressive movement tries to isolate an idea, whether it's the transgender movement or the, the minority voices that ultimately have the majority of sway when it comes to policies, right? Why are transgender policies being pushed at a federal level when it only impacts 0.06% of the American population? Things like that, mm -hmm. right? They are winning, the far left progressives are winning the culture wars. And ultimately, that does have to do with the breakdown of the Judeo-Christian values that we were founded upon. But also, what they're really after is our economic system. They use these culture wars, I think, to ultimately get after our free enterprise system. And that's why I think it is so essential for people who are in either elected office or community leaders, people who want to bring back what made our country great, our values that not only defined us, but they mm -hmm. also united us. You know, I think about this a lot when uh, Democrat teachers back, you know, 10, 20 years ago. Sure, they were Democrats. Sure, they were part of a teacher's union. But a lot of those teachers had fathers who fought in World War II. And they would absolutely never disrespect the American flag in their classrooms the way that teacher, millennial women teachers, millennial women in general, and, or millennial far left progressive millennials in general have disrespected our culture and have circumvented a lot of that and gotten to, into the young minds. So I think we need to go back to, A, those values united us. They defined us and they united us. There's something we can all agree upon. Doesn't matter who you're, where you're from, what political party you you associate with, where your parents came from, whatever. Uh, we need to go back to those those cultural values as a whole, which is standing for our flag. Okay, mm -hmm. I agree. For, uh, as one example, Nick says that a woman like you should have just, after high school, focused on being a mother. Fair. Fair. Okay. 
Um, you're 30. Yeah. You're accomplished. You went to college. You. You're gorgeous. Thank you're you. You're smart. You're intelligent. <laughs> you're going to make a great wife someday. Thank you. Nick believes it should have been sooner rather than later, but you're <laughs> on your own time frame. Why is Nick wrong that you're actually a happy, healthy, beautiful person and you're living your, your life that you want to live? Yeah, well, first talk about just briefly, you know, my grandmother never made it past third grade. Uh, she came from Guatemala. And for her, you know, the fact that she could never learn and, and even read or write to a, a substantial amount uh, was really personal to her because with education, that provided freedom. You know, some education is something that can never be taken away from you. This is your mother or your Whether grandmother? You're, uh, my grandmother. Okay. And what about your mother? For her, so for yeah. her, it was so important that her children were educated because she knew that education equaled freedom. It meant that something could never take that away from you, mm -hmm. man or woman. And so when my mom and my grandmother came from Guatemala to the United States, you know, my mother worked three jobs to, to come here, learned English at night, to be educated, to be a woman of worth. And uh, that really mattered. She ended up being a teacher and uh, really being able to, to be somebody. And, you know, I find that really offensive that you don't believe that women should have uh, the education or the freedom because there are a lot of women who would do anything to be able to read a book and you laugh but it's it's sad women can't read is that what you're saying well i'm saying that it, there are some women in some countries that can't read and when Nobody's you undermine saying they shouldn't have literacy well, but it's a question of should they have secondary education should they pursue a degree and when you say education is freedom I went to school for two semesters before I dropped out. I went to school with a girl who borrowed her entire tuition for four years, getting an IR degree, $200,000 in debt for, a, for an IR degree, for a liberal arts degree. Is that freedom? I buy a lot but, of freedom. But freedom but Nick, of isn't, that, isn't that anecdotal? Because I know a ton of dudes in student loan debt as well. They're doing nothing with their life. It's an example. Yeah. It's an example. No, I the, know, but I, the point one is, good example. But you agree, but, though. Uh, there's millions of guys and girls with yeah, useless do, degrees. Don't they have the freedom to make the mistake? I mean, I think that is part of the American totally. way. They have no, the freedom to make the mistake. Yeah, and nobody's saying nobody has the freedom to go to college or something like that. But the point is, on the statement specifically that education equals freedom, I don't necessarily buy that getting a college degree is the ticket that it used to be. So no, everyone needs to go to true. college I, to get freedom. I, I, I don't know what that, but then why are you saying that women in particular shouldn't go to college and they should be... Look, here's, here's no, 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 let me, let me explain. I think also, okay. too, that women can have it all. And I think this no. construct of you have to choose this career, you have to choose to be going to college you, over having a family. I'd love to have a family one day. I'd love to be married someday. And I think you can have it all. And I don't think that you have to choose between this lifestyle of either or. Nick, why do you say that women can't have it all? And then I'm gonna come to you, Amy, and then I'm gonna come to you, Nima, I promise. Can't have it all because the clock's ticking. And, you know, you're 30, and I don't mean it to get personal, but, of course, women, there's an age after which they can't have kids. There's an age after which it's much more difficult for them to have kids. That's just biology. I've been out and of so, college hang for on, 10 hang on. years. I, I let you finish. I know you want to rip my face off, but I let you finish. And so the point is, is that when women go to college full-time or they have a full-time job, they can't be a mother because a mother is a full-time job. So that means that if they are having kids, guess who's not around for eight hours during the day. Where do they put the baby for eight hours during the day? Do they just stuff them in a box somewhere? Got to send them to, day to daycare. Somebody has to take care of the kids. Just because you're the one that's not doing it doesn't mean it's not a full-time job. So no, you cannot have it all without making sacrifices. And the problem is working women will have a kid. They'll prioritize their career. This is what happens in many cases. And who is the one who is forced to pay the price? Who for this sacrifice in time? It's the kid. the kid. It's the kid that doesn't have the mother for those eight hours a day when their mom's at work. It's the kid who mom can't go to the game. Mom can't pick you up when you're sick from school. Mom can't do X, Y, and Z. So actually, we have a short life. We have to make decisions in time. Nobody can have everything of everything. Nobody can have it all. We have to make decisions, which means sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And the problem that is going on, if women want to 
work their whole life and never have kids. I don't think that's good for them. I don't think that's fulfilling. But worse still is you have women that are promiscuous, which is a mortal sin. They'll wind up having kids, often become a single mom, and even if they're not, the kids wind up in daycare. And the point is, is it's just a very selfish lifestyle. People should put their family first. Amy, let That's me ask you. Let job. me ask Amy, because Amy's been quiet, and Amy, I'll come to you, and then everyone, believe me, everyone's going to get tons of time to talk, I guarantee you. Um, you're saying that, that um, with, in regards to women working, did you go to college, Amy? Uh, yeah, I have my associates in justice and legal. I dropped okay. out. Uh, but I, I agree with you to some degree, but I don't think anyone can really have it all. It's only the top 1%, someone exceptional in any field to really have it all. So yes, you can, but will everybody? No, it's unlikely. So I understand both sides of the arguments. I think if a woman really wants to do it and she can make that happen, but you're absolutely correct. That is not going to come without sacrifice. And I don't think you can put 100% into both things. You can be all in on something, but like you can be all in on multiple things, but that means that mm -hmm. one thing at a time, you have to be giving 100% of your focus to that thing. So that is gonna be time away from your children. That is gonna have some type of an impact on them. So I think that this is something to certainly keep in mind when we are trying to talk about the traditional values that we wanna reinstill in society, but that doesn't necessarily mean we have to legislate it or anything like that, which you said, you, you never even said that well, in the first place. Are, are you, are you, um... Like, what are you doing to sort of reinforce your 28, mm -hmm. smart, attractive, same, you guys are the same people, smart, attractive, late 20s, early 30s, mm -hmm. no man, no kids, tons of people in your DMs. Here's <laughs> Nick, who's basically like, yeah. I mean, if you could sum up in one sentence your advice for them, what would it be? Don't go to school, have kids. Stop having sex, have kids with your husband. Okay. I mean, and for you me, mentioned that mindset... being promiscuous is a mortal sin yeah it's is it. that sex before marriage yeah so what happens then you go to hell so they're going to hell what? if they don't repent yeah so all they have to do is do what they have to go to repent confession, confession. Yeah. okay confession. Say, i'm okay. sorry so do you, do you firmly believe that let's say these two girls have had sex out of wedlock will go to hell well i mean the catholic position is we don't know who goes to heaven but we do believe that adultery is a mortal sin premarital sex is a mortal sin and mortal sins mean they're grave and with full consent Gotcha. Breaking the Ten Commandments. So what's your advice to young Amy over here? My advice would be find a husband who's going to take care of you and love you and cherish you and have kids. And that's the and most you know beautiful what? thing. That's actually what I want. I got into a debate with Brendan yeah. Carter about this recently because I've been a person, like I've traveled, like I've moved across the world, made a lot of money, I've done the things, and one thing I can strongly attest to is it never made me truly happy or fulfilled. Mm. You, get the dopamine, you get the dopamine rush, but then with goals, it's always on to the next thing. Dopamine mm -hmm. is highly, highly addictive. And so people have this end in mind where they're like, when I get here, I'll be happy, but then there's always something else that comes up. Um, for women, I, in, in this debate, we actually brought up that um, the, the chemical of oxytocin mm -hmm. is a chemical that can only be induced, it, it, nece it nece necessitates the presence of another person. Sure. You need to be giving to another person, you need to be pouring into them, providing value to them. And I think the easiest way to do that for a woman is through a family. So okay. my mindset has completely changed, uh, completely Are changed on this recently. Are you ready to quit recently. your job? Yeah, well, my goal is to get married and have kids. I mean, I just got out of a relationship, so I know I need to heal from that. I don't want to bring any of that into my next relationship. But mm. the next guy I'm with, I want that to be the person I'm with for the rest of my life. I want to have kids. I want a family. I want those traditional values. Okay. Really more than, like, anything, honestly. Well, the only one person on the panel that is married with kids here is our friend Nima. So yeah. as you're hearing this conversation go down, married, how long have you been married? Uh, less than a year, but with the same woman for about Four or five years now. Four or five years, and you have a daughter. Yeah. So congratulations. As you're hearing this discussion, the women working, beautiful, attractive, Nick, uh, staunch in his opinions, celibate, Michael, ladies' man. Man of What's God. What's your take? Man, maybe I am man of God. You don't know. You don't know. Uh, <laughs> Nat, virgin. Maybe there's something here, Nick. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you like the dark meat, but we can have that combo. Yeah. What's your advice for uh, men, women, families? What, what, what do you see out there? Yeah, you know, uh, as crazy as it is, I, I agree with some of the things that uh, Nick said. Uh, and my wife is a college graduate, and uh, she's a teacher by training, and she stays home. Mm. You know, it's, we underestimate how much it takes to really give a loving, 
uh, dedication to raising a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my wife really wakes up sometimes, two o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, how, how could she work? I knew before I got married, and I was working with fashion models in New York for about 10 years, and I got a nice little, you know, small city girl, like village girl from Germany, evangelical Christian. And, uh, you know, she, she's very dedicated to raising our child. And her parents are, are nearby, her grandmother's nearby, her sister's nearby, her cousins are nearby. And she gets to see this whole extended family. We got cows and horses and stuff, very different than New York. And, and uh, I don't know, I, I, think, I think having my wife stay at home, I think she's happy. Mm -hmm. and, I, and she's a liberal. I mean, she's not like me. I'm pretty independent, but she, she's, a, she's, you know, in Germany, they, their center is pretty mm -hmm. left. And one more thing, we were talking about uh, in America, I agree with Nick, when he said that uh, it, we're not creating things. My, my father-in-law, CEO in the auto sector, they have so many factories in Germany where they're creating widgets, like you mentioned widgets, and they're hyper-specialized. And in Germany, I think you see way more craftsmen, way more uh, guys that are highly skilled. Co college is not necessary. college is free, but if you don't go to college, you don't have that stigma that you do in the United States. They, they value people that are skilled workers, that are building with their hands. And in Germany, which I consider generally a, a richer country than the United States, I spent half, a little more what, than What do you mean richer year. country in the United States? I consider it a little richer just because, okay, I spend, let's say, a little over six months here, five months there, uh, have a home in both. I don't see homelessness there. And I, I, it depends I on your finding. I mean, GDP wise, it's not even close. No, 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 no. Yeah. no but I'm just saying, like, yeah. I don't see homelessness in the streets there. Okay. I don't see the level of just raw violence of people walking into the stores and just taking things. Mm -hmm. Here, people have guns. Here, just it's just widespread school shootings. I mean, we don't have these problems in Germany. You know, I, I, I'm just objectively speaking. And I love America, born and raised. This country saved my grandfather's life. That He came from Iran. So I have a lot of respect for this country. But I'm just saying, objectively speaking, as a father of a little infant daughter, mm -hmm. I would feel more comfortable her going to school in Germany. Why do you think that, and how often, how long have you lived in Germany? Or how much time have you spent it's in Germany? My, now it's going to be about my third year, fourth Why year. Why do you think that they've... Um, progressed so so much since you know there know, may yeah. or may not have been something that definitely happened yeah they, they haven't had uh, to, in they the haven't had to uh, fund the military 1940s. for 80 years how about that well, well what have they done to increase yeah. their economy what was well, that michael well, they haven't had to fund a military for 80 like the three okay. let's go back to the 1980s and 1990s the three countries that made the best automobiles in the world japan Volkswagen, yeah. italy and germany mm -hmm. what do those three countries have in common they didn't have to have a military for the last 80 years because mm -hmm. the U.S. provided their military. So they were able to turn their manufacturing economy on other things, and that's why they build better cars and a lot of other stuff that are better than us. But to the, to the opposite point, Pratt & Whitney is in the United States. Raytheon's in the United States. Lockheed Martin's in the United States. Boeing North is in the United Brooklyn, States. Yeah. There are a, a, we act like we make incredibly, incredibly complex incredibly expensive things that help our economy here in the United States. It's just we've gotten to this narrative where we don't make anything. We don't yeah. make we don't make plastic widgets yeah. like they do in China. Absolutely. But we do make a lot of things in this country. Pull up, uh, if you would, while I have this conversation. What does America make? You're absolutely right. I mean, talking about defense and military industrial complex and everything with that, we're making the the ships and the missiles and the jets and the tanks. And definitely well, I mean, making but, but, that. Real talk. I mean, you think about Japan over the last eight years. They have not had to... Yeah, worry about any okay. any defense spending on on uh, against China at all because we've got y Kadena and Yokota Air Base and we've got um, Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. So like that's the reason why they don't have to worry about that. Gotcha. Back to Germany. Yeah, I mean, I first of all, thank you for serving our country uh, to give us all our freedom, including Nick and Adam and the young the ladies here. And even though we're disagreeing, it's pretty cool. We have the freedom to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just. In Germany, why I feel it's safer is um, I think that we've become desensitized to the violence uh, here in the United States. I mean, you don't really feel it until you live abroad. Um, and that, that's just, I, I think that we've really become desensitized. And also, I think one more reason why they do better is, again, I'm not, I'm not a liberal, uh, but they, they do give health care to everyone there. And I think one reason is they don't have the level of corruption in their capital as we do in the United States. Mm -hmm. Here, the right and the left are colluding, they're pillaging the middle class, left and right. Uh, healthcare, uh, Pat, Pat, 
was talking about the insurance industry, and I thought, uh, you know, it's it's not healthcare, it's sick care. I mean, that, that mm -hmm. so many, that's just becoming a, a cliche at this point. So many people are saying that, and it's true because in Germany, I've seen the healthcare system in Germany firsthand, and I've seen the healthcare system here in the United States. There, it's much the person that's working here as a cameraman. If he goes to the bathroom today and he takes a shit and blood comes out, he might be scared to go to the doctor to find out, hey man, I might have something that's gonna cost me $50,000. So he doesn't go, then he goes and gets to, it, to detect it later, maybe they catch colon cancer stage three. In Germany, when it's free, someone can go get tested, catch it much earlier, and they don't have that collective stress of how am I gonna pay my mortgage? But, but, do I suggest that here in the United States? Not until we, you know, really drain the swamp of all the corruption. Yeah, I mean, we can have the debate of whether health care is a right or, or yeah. is a, a privilege and, and that situation. Uh, you touched on something that essentially we'll move on to now. We have the freedom to have these types of conversations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You talked yeah. about deep, being deplatformed, okay? Mm -hmm. Nick, you've been deplatformed from... Many of places. It's easy okay? to say what I'm not deplatformed. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I'm just going to kind of go uh, right here. Uh, 2020, Fuentes' YouTube channel was demonetized. One of his videos was removed by YouTube. 2014, YouTube was terminated for violating policies on hate speech. Uh, January 2020, Fuentes was the most viewed live streamer on DLive platform following January 6th. Um, his channel was subsequently suspended for inciting violent and illegal activities. Um, you had claimed that your bank account had been frozen and that it had been placed on a federal no-fly list. Uh, and then you've been banned from Airbnb, Facebook, and Instagram. Twitter was among the last mainstream social media sites to ban you, which they permanently suspended you uh, July of 2021. Uh, you've also been banned from, let me take a breath, E-commerce services, including PayPal, Venmo, Patreon, Shopify, Stripe, Streamlabs, Coinbase, okay? You also, your verified Twitter account was briefly reinstated, then it was taken off again uh, at the, from the Southern Poverty Law Center after he immediately praised Hitler and the Unabomber and declared Jews run the news. Good rhyme right there. Maybe you should get into the hip-hop game. Um, uh, Twitter banned him again the next day. Like, the, you got out of jail, got a jail-free card. Boom, back in jail. Life sentence. So before deplatforming the major providers, such as Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and DLive, Wintus collaborated with Alex Jones, who also has been deplatformed de from um, Twitter and everywhere else, um, to launch his online streaming platform, Cozy.tv. Um, but then you were um, also suspended from Getter. So what platforms are you on these days? Uh, Telegram and Rumble, and I think that's literally it. I'm okay. from everything else. So Rumble. Um, how long have you been doing Rumble? Been doing Rumble for about, I think, six months. Started okay. Started putting my show there. Who did you work with to get onto Rumble? Well, I just started a channel. Okay. You know, I don't have a contract or anything. Nothing. How familiar are you with their CEO? Well, he's familiar with me. We haven't spoken. Okay. But uh, indirectly, we've parlayed. Do you know times. his name? Yeah, Chris. Chris what? I don't know his last name. Uh, Google uh, Rumble CEO. Hold on. I'm going to look it up. It's like Chris Polinski or something? Some of the yeah. yeah. Pavlovsky. Michael, you're going to the bathroom. A grown-ass man that we told not to go to the bathroom is going to the goddamn I did. I bathroom. I went to the bathroom before I came. I drank a Chris Pavlovsky, go. I go to uh, But you'll be back in a second. Jesus Christ, guys. <laughs> Joey, two men. Um, <laughs> two. Un-fucking real. I'll wait for the Nick, I like you better than my two friends right now. Can I make a comment? Jesus, hold on, wait, 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 one sec, wait one sec. Uh, Chris Pavlovsky, Jewish, by the way. Uh, I don't think he is, actually. I don't know. Uh, we can fact check that. Yeah. Um, why, why would you think that you're deplatformed from all these social media platforms, all these um, uh, e-commerce websites, uh, financial companies, what's going on? Well, um, you know, there's a big conversation about it, and I, I did a show about this recently when talking about Twitter, actually, Elon Musk's company, because, of course, Elon Musk's proposition is that he was going to buy Twitter to make it free speech and never mm -hmm. ban anything that isn't against the law. 
I said, but the problem with this promise is that it, it assumes that the censorship is coming from the platform. We know that the censorship is on the platform. We know it's enforced by the platform, but it doesn't come from the platform. If, if it did, probably the censorship wouldn't be uniform. In other words, the same people wouldn't be banned on everything. Like Tate, who mm -hmm. you've had on the show, he got ban banned, I think you remember, a year ago from everything at once. Yep. It was like one week and the hammer came down. I made the joke to him, do you think, what are the chances these guys are all like on a WhatsApp group chat and then boom, ah, no, that can't. The same day, everything, bang, yep. bang, bang. How long was your spread out? Mine was spread out over a, a certain period, gotcha. that maybe a year or two. No, this but was the, same day. Yeah, like the same, yeah, the same week. Same they week. Were, the entire thing, yes. his whole digital presence. And that's because the censorship is coming from the app store. It's coming from a lot of the backend services like Cloudflare or the domain registrars. And it is also coming from a very concerted effort by an activist class. I'm talking about the ADL, the CEO of the ADL, Jonathan Greenblatt, or the president. The Anti-Defamation League. Yeah, Anti-Defamation gotcha. League. He went on TV last week and basically verified what I've been talking about for a long time, which everybody knew, is that they talk to everybody, all the social media companies, Greenblatt and the ADL, they talk to Facebook, they talk to Twitter, they talk to YouTube. On YouTube, they're a trusted flagger. On Facebook, they're an expert that's brought in. They even create features for Twitter. If you go to the ADL website, they have 50 suggestions, technical suggestions, for how to change the site on a technical level to make it easier to censor. And so, you know, the point is, is that there is a real censorship architecture in the country, and it's not, you know, don't, don't necessarily point the blame at the contractors that actually do the clicking to do the ban on the platform, or even the platforms themselves. There is clearly an interest in having certain things banned, things that are against uh, the, the liberal consensus in the country, even where law enforcement's involved. You know, there was a big scandal this year. It was uncovered by the Missouri Secretary of State and one other Secretary of State. In a lawsuit, they found that DHS, FBI, and a number of other government agencies mm -hmm. were directly telling Facebook what to ban. Literally, the press office for the White House was making a call to Facebook and saying, hey, can you pull this post? And they say, yep, right away. So, Malik, pull up. Well, keep talking. Pull up the Pierce Morgan clip, please. There's so, two clips, two, two of them. Anyway, so that's the kind of thing that goes on. And... Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I think, you know, I say a lot of controversial stuff and a lot of it's for effect and a lot of it's jokes and things like that. But I think relatively it's pretty tame. If people actually sit down and watch my show and give it a chance, it's not it's not actually an extremely radical message. Okay, I mean, Michael, it, have you watched this yeah, show? Yeah, yeah but, but to his point, he's he's correct. Like I, one of the issues I have is is so I was talking to I was texting Andrew Tate the day he got like plat deplatformed everywhere and like when when your side wants to make it out like there isn't a conspiracy, here's a, here's a great idea. Don't deplatform someone on everyone at the same time. Like that kind of confirms that this whole thing is happening. Like I said before, even though I disagree with Nick, the best way for us to come to a, by the way, we may come to a consensus on certain things. That's only gonna happen if we are allowed open discourse. And, of, and it was really funny because uh, Graham Stephan did an interview with Destiny and Destiny said this and I really- We'll be here tomorrow it. on the show, huh? Graham Stephan. Huh, what'd you say? He'll be here tomorrow on the show. Oh, yeah. Gra yeah. Graham Stephan, and he, uh, one of the things Destiny said, he goes, I'm the only person on this side of the aisle who's willing to have these debates with other people because everyone else on my side of the aisle, they just say, shut up. Mm -hmm. You're, they, they look down at people who don't agree with them. And so I think that's a really unhealthy way to do things. Uh, so, no, I, I definitely ag agree to that standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I, I do think you have said some things that are a little bit more than just playful and controversial, you know, just like making jokes about you know, killing Ben Shapiro and stuff like that. Oh, come on. Uh, but, but I, I, I know, I know you're, you're going to say it's metaphorical, and I get that. That's fine. My point is, like, it, it's just, it seems to be kind of repeated when you talk about things that happened in Germany in the 1940s, and then you start talking about Cookie Monster. That, like, you, you, you can see how that might be a, like, can a little sensitive to other people. Go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead, man. Relevant. I mean, if we're going to use the, the word of my <clears throat> people, just say the J's. No, no, we're, we're, we're I mean, <laughs> yes. Well, I don't even need to, but, but here's the thing. What you have to keep in mind is that I've done 1,200 shows. I'm going to yeah. be doing my 1,200 stream this week. And what you have ever since, because I started my show when I was 18 years old, when I was a freshman in college, they have been collecting. I'm talking about the ADL, SPLC, Right Wing Watch. Every time I go live, there is somebody from one of these groups that sits down and watches the show, 
to clip. And mm -hmm. when I say something that's inconvenient, when I say something that sounds bad, they clip it, they put it in an article, and then every time, henceforth, I go on a show mm -hmm. like this, or I, I, they write a news article about me, they're there to reproduce basically the highlight reel of every unfortunate thing I've ever said, every, you know, like for example, you say I talk about killing Ben Shapiro. For context, I was playing Grand Theft Auto. I was doing a gaming stream. I saw an NPC that looked like a Hasidic Jewish person. And you ran him And over. I said, that's Ben Shapiro, let's go get Ben Shapiro. And, and people misconstrue that as like a, a threat. Mm -hmm. Or even Nima brought up earlier, he said, well, you're talking about gaining up with Hitler to kill a black guy. I said on my show, I saw somebody the other day in my neighborhood littering. It was a black person. Threw, was just throwing three rappers out of his window. I said, people like that should get the death penalty. I said, littering in my community? I said, that's ridiculous. But, I said, well, is that literal or is that just it's bomb being bombastic? It's, okay. it's so, but, hyperbole. But don't you see how like you have kind of a response? I understand what you're saying. You're trying to be funny, and I get that. I've said saying things that were, you know, you could probably take out of context too. But my point is like, I, I'm not, you know, you're a hundred times bigger on your platform than I am. I feel a responsibility for the things that I say that I, they can't be taken out of context. And it's one of the things where I tell my clients is like when you say things to people and you text them they're there forever and so I feel a responsibility for certain jokes that I can't make because they can be taken out of context do you ever feel that responsibility as well because you have a very big platform you have a lot of people who do take a lot of the things you say literally even when you're being metaphorical well I would say I would say first of all that's not true because nobody who watches my show has ever done anything violent you know all these kinds of things you've heard about politically motivated violence there's never been anybody that watches my show that's done anything like that because I push Catholicism. It's a sin to kill. It's a sin to hurt people. As far as responsibility is concerned, you have to keep in mind that it's bad faith. You know, when people take something like I'm playing a video game stream and I'm, I kill an NPC and they say, that's a death threat. You know, that's an actionable yeah. death threat. At a certain point, I say, okay. okay, well, this isn't fair. No matter what I say, they're going to take it out of context. They're going to take it in the most uncharitable way. And so, and I tend to do this where I'll, I'll play it up to such a crazy point as the statement in itself. I, I did a speech after I got banned on Twitter and I went outside a hotel and I said, you know what, I'm gonna give the most racist, yeah. the most sexist, that, yeah. the most, and it's, it's because as you know, the left mm -hmm. will call everything under the sun racist, even when it's not, sometimes even when it is, and so it's just to play it up a little bit. So, um, well, Nick, but I, I, do, I do feel responsible. Nick, let me, let me ask you. Um, when you were 18, you had how many subscribers? Not many, like. Okay, what was your reputation? Uh, well, I was a uh, mainstream conservative, like okay. your average guy. And now you're 24? Yeah. You have how many subscribers, viewers? Like probably a quarter million across all okay. platforms. Okay, so you've come a long way. Mm -hmm. um, how have you sort of reinvented yourself and your messaging? Because we've talked about Tate. Tate today is not saying the exact same things he was two years ago, three years ago, five years ago. He's had to evolve. Some of the things he's actually said, he's sort of said, look, my bad on that one, you know. I recently came out and said, hey, I might even actually get married right now, whatever. So Tate's evolving, right? A lot of people, we talked about some of the things that you've said, they're like, yeah, Nick, I don't know how you're going to beat that one. I mean, all right, you want these people to die? You want these people not to be able to go to school? You want segregation? All right. How have your... Uh, not only your thoughts and your beliefs evolved, but your words. Well, I, they haven't changed much, you know, because when I... But isn't that an issue if they haven't changed in six years? Not necessarily, because I went through a very rapid period of change at that time, which was 2016. 2016 was an explosion of political discourse because people don't even think about it this way. It was the first election where you had widespread adoption of the smartphone and social media. First, I think it was double what it was in 2012. And so as a consequence, you had Gamergate, you had the Trump revolution. And so I started out basically the opposite of what I am now. You know, So when you say, well, there was no change, I was a 180 when I started the show or shortly before I started the show. I was a Zionist. I was a fan of Shapiro. I was a fan of Prager, Charlie Kirk. You were Kirk. a Zionist and fan of Shapiro? Yeah, and I even, when I was in high school, this is a dumb story. Long story short, I, I got like kicked out of my Model UN team because I was such a Zionist. And the guy running it was like a big Palestinian supporter. And we got into it all the time and they threw me out. So what changed, Nick? 
Well, I, I just started reading. I started reading more. I started looking into things. And specifically, I started talking to this girl named Cassie Dillon at college. And, you know, we started talking, and she liked me, and she worked for Shapiro. She worked for Daily Wire. And at that time, I was asking very basic narrow questions that maybe there'd be agreement on this platform. I said, why is there all this foreign aid to the state of Israel? It's 3.8 billion a year. It's more than any other country for 40 years. You know, what's going on with that? And instead of getting an answer like, oh, well, here's why this is the answer. I was told, well, you know, you can't talk about that. Don't ask that again. And I'd push and say, well, we're America first. I'm pro Trump. My show's called America first. They'd say, yeah, well, that's one you just can't talk about because, you know, there's an answer. And that was but her answer? That was her. That was a writer there named Elliot Hamilton, another writer named Aaron Bandler. That was that whole crew. Okay. And I said, well, you know, clearly this relationship. And, and, and to be clear, where did they work? Daily Wire. Okay, the Shapiro gotcha. Company. And were you, you were going to work at the Daily Wire, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Okay. Wow. They, gotcha. they were talking about making me a writer there. And one, and I'm, this is no exaggeration at all. One night I'm talking to Cassie Dillon and saying this kind of stuff. And she said, you know what? We had been friends. I'd stayed at her house. We had gone to parties, whatever. She goes, you know, we're not in the same movement anymore. You're, you're alt-right, and I'm a conservative, and I'm never going to talk to you again. Don't ever contact me. And the say, they all blocked me on Twitter. They never talked to me again. And that is, now, that didn't catalyze it. Of course, the process was underway. I had been looking at things and asking these questions. But that, getting that door slammed in my face, and like Michael said, People are realizing censoring people like me doesn't work because yeah. then people like me, it's a good mm -hmm. heuristic. They're like, hey, if I get banned for talking about this, maybe it's a forbidden do, truth. Do you know how many flat earthers I have to debate with specifically on this <laughs> point? Because they get ratioed and they're like, well, that proves that we're tr you're telling the truth. And I'm like, man, I really wish they'd stop doing this shit because it's exactly like what he's saying. Like, don't ban these people for making these statements. I want to know if I like personally, I want to know if my, the political candidate that I want to vote for doesn't believe in something I believe in. If we ban him from that type of speech, he may he may say that buzzword that lets me know I can't vote for this dude, but I can't. We can't see that because YouTube will take away that. Uh, I'm not even going to say the words because I'm not going to get you deplatformed. Mm -hmm. that, that's the issue. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally understand what you're saying. Like I that. don't agree that there should be censorship. But Nick, I want to ask you a question in terms of how are you? I need. To, I think that you are a product of the culture and where it is today. Because how are you any different than? someone like Ilhan Omar saying that white men should, are a danger to society. I think we live in this world now in the culture where making money off of being sensational and getting more followers and getting more attention is a direct result of where we are as a culture. And to me, that's very sad. Because men like Eisenhower, men in our, we stand on the shoulder, shoulders of giants. Do you think that they would ever, ever say the things that you have said? No, no, no. Yeah. They might have said it. They all but agree to, with But me. to make money, no. Eisenhower does not believe that the Holocaust uh, did not Careful. happen. And well, Nick, Eisenhower had concentration camps himself. You probably don't know that because you don't even Nick, read Nick, any Nick, books. Wait, 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 I mean, there were there were camps for Japanese people, but they weren't systematically. I'm, no, I'm talking about camps death. in point Germany. Is, my point is, do you do you believe that you are effective, or do you do this to gain attention and to make money? Uh, yeah, uh, let me reply to that because a lot of people accuse me of that. It's a pretty curious way for a person like me to make money by getting myself banned from the banking system. I can't have a personal checking account. I can't have credit card processing you on my website. You didn't know that you were going to get banned, though, when you started saying all this stuff. I think it was pretty established even back then. Chuck Johnson, Milo, all those guys got banned way before me. It would be far more lucrative to do what you do and talk about Hamas as the enemy of the world because there's no shortage of jobs for people that carry water for that. But if you oppose it, you get banned from everything, you get kicked out of turning point, you get whatever. So let me just say it hasn't been especially lucrative for a person like me to not have access to the financial system. Got, well, just to be clear, and I'll come to you. So just to be clear, I think she made up a good point about the attention economy. Attention is a currency these days in whether it's with your finances, with views, the eyeball economy, with women. That's how they, you know, suck resources out of men, time, energy, uh, yeah, attention. Um, what you say, is it, do you actually believe what you say, or is it 
the good old fashioned shock jock, let's shock the system and be bombastic. How do you process I that? would have to believe what I say because I've gone through a process which, you know, I, I don't wish on people. It's not, and it's not just being banned from the banking system, which I don't think you realize. It means I can't make money. Imagine if you couldn't accept credit cards on your website. Mm -hmm. You have a huge platform, but if you didn't have YouTube, if you didn't have Super Chats, if you couldn't accept credit cards, the ability to make money rapidly disappears. As far as the sensationalism goes, you know, I'll admit I'm sensational like anybody. It's marketing. But I've gone through the gauntlet of what I have at a very young age. And, and again, like I said, it's the financial, it's the social media deplatforming. Mm -hmm. It's being ostracized by my high school friends and, and, you know, the whole gamut of having views like I have because I really believe them. And it's founded not, by the way, in like race baiting or something. It's founded in my conviction in Catholicism. If you mm -hmm. knew anything about me, what really changed in college is not just that one inquiry about the foreign aid, it was the fact that I picked up a Bible actually for the first time in my life in college and I genuinely thought about death. And I realized that what we have today is a world order that is totally set against Jesus and totally set against God. And so it's on my heart to do this no matter the cost, even if it, you know, even Nick, if Nick, let me ask you, and then I'm coming, I'm coming to Nima because he hasn't spoken. So I have this, there's a bio, mm -hmm. right? Some of it is, Probably accurate. I would say most of it. Some of it might not be. Because I would like to, your message to be conveyed correctly. Sure. So I'm just going to read you a couple things of what it says, but then I would like, forget about this. You write your own bio. Hmm. I'm going to give you this, and you say, you know what? Here's what I stand for. Short, quick, not a whole espousal, right? Nick Fuentes, known for holding anti-Semitic views and denying the hard cause. That's what it says here. He's a far-right supremacist and political commentator and live streamer. He identifies as a member of the incel movement and as a supporter of authoritarian government and as a Catholic integralist. 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 I gotta learn how to read. And white Christian nationalist. Uh, in 2020, seeking to establish a white supremacist conference to rival CPAC, Fuentes began holding the annual America First Political Action Committee, AFPAC. Um, Fuentes attended 2017 white supremacist rally in Charlottesville and later as the attendee of speaker events preceding the 2021 United States Capitol attack. Um, so there's a bio. Uh, how much of that is accurate? Uh, and here's your chance to write your own bio. Well, a lot of it's not true. Every time they say my name, they gotta throw in white supremacist, white nationalist, anti-Semitic, neo-Nazi. You mm -hmm. know, I don't identify with any of those things. I'd say I'm a Catholic American nationalist. Catholic American nationalist but you know at the, I, I understand that um but you know they say you know you are your reputation you know like michael no matter what you michael tries to tell me to say, but I'm sure no matter what true. michael tries to tell no, me I, I know that that dude is out in <laughs> vegas i know he's with women i know he's got high profile buddies i don't care what he says i'm seeing the words he has a reputation right homeboy over there reputation he was been in the fashion industry he says a lot of bombastic things. He has a reputation. I have a reputation. You go ask anybody in Miami, it's like, dude, Adam's been around the block, blah, 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 blah. You have this reputation. So what have you done to dispel this reputation? Well, I would say it's a little different. I mean, my reputation, if you talk to people that know me, because that's really what a reputation is, people that know you. not Because Wikipedia, yeah. that's a Wikipedia article. It's just been established that the CIA runs Wikipedia. That just came out this week. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily say that what the press says about you is who you are. Yeah. Because if the press, if what the press said about you is who you are, then what does that make Andrew Tate? And what does that make That's Donald Trump or yeah. Alex Jones? And I would say that if you talk to people that know me, I'm a, I'm a polite, respectful person, and I treat everybody in a respectful way. I happen to have views that politically are totally against the system. And, and therefore, the media, which we know is controlled by the system, doesn't mm -hmm. have nice things to say about me. Um, and as, as far as dispelling my reputation, what do you, what do you mean by the, oh yeah, go ahead. What, you know, what have I done to dispel that? I mean, at the end of the day, what can a person do? I mean, I've had special guests at my event. I've had speakers at my event that are black. How am I a white supremacist? I've had my whole lineup be black speakers. The guy that got me on the show yeah. is black. Oh, yeah. I have Jewish friends. Some of the people that I cite the most in these debates, like Michael Sartain's been doing his research. I know that. The primary author I cite is Jewish. His name's Ron Oons. The other author I cited mm -hmm. on Fresh and Fit, Israel Shehak, is Jewish. Another good friend of mine, Darren Beatty, runs Revolver, Jewish. Laura Loomer. 
I, at great personal expense, people call me a hypocrite for this. I went out and supported her, and I was there on her election night party. Mm -hmm. She's a hardcore Jewish Zionist. Now, I happen to believe that she's America first. We disagree on that issue. But the point is, is, you know, all you'd have to do is take a look at the company I keep in. You know, it's, it's a diverse panel. Gotcha. Nima, uh, you mentioned his name. I don't know what that situation was, but the, de the deplatforming, you mentioned a guy. What, 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 you, you mentioned Nima's name. Well, you were responding to something he said. What was that that you mentioned At to him? At what point? I mean, I've, I've, uh, the mutual friend or something? Oh, yeah, he talked about Ali. Okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been canceled for standing up a, to toxic feminism. I lost about 800,000 followers on TikTok. I empathize with both of you. But uh, I just wanted to chime in on what Michael said, because uh, I agreed with it um, on you, Nick. And I, and I do think you're being pretty professional, and you seem like a nice guy in person, uh, to, to your credit, you know? Um, now, to, to what Michael said, uh, you do complain that people, you, you, you get angry that people are complaining that you used the N-word, that you said Hitler is very cool. But uh, 45 minutes ago, you threw a huge fit whenever anyone here brought up the accusations of you watching child porn. I don't think that's an accusation. Who's accusing me of that? I, mean, it's, it's, I think Ethan, I think Ethan Ralph, I think quite a few people online yeah, but what have are you talked talking about, about you being a closet homosexual as well and watching okay. child porn. I mean, it's, 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 I think you know what I'm talking about. And Nima, where well, are you getting this story from? I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, what, it's, what, it's, what it's, evidence do you have for getting? any of this? He could speak for himself. That you're a closet homosexual? Yeah, what's the evidence? I think, I think enough That's people not. have told me. I think it's been all over. It. So Later. what's the evidence, if you know? What's the evidence that you're straight? What's the, you said I'm gay, child porn. What's the evidence? Let's How hear many, it. What's the I case? I think there's been at least two people in your group that have basically been caught around, you know, with pedophilia. Who? Ali was one. And what is my relationship with him? Tell me. I don't know. You got fired by Kanye's campaign, so, didn't you? you Just so like you don't you know. But you got fired by him, didn't you? Uh, no. But let's talk about Ali because but, we could talk about Kanye, but let's talk about Ali because you said... Ali's in my group. What does that mean? Because you just said that. I mean, that's like your best friend forever, isn't it? He's he? my best friend forever? What's my relationship with him? You know what it is. Now you're downplaying you it. Don't even, you but like you don't to... even know. Because you're here to attack me personally because you have defensive. some beef with my political you're, you're views. Getting, you're, I like Trump. You're getting defensive again. Because you're... Okay. I, I never set up Trump like you did when you... I when didn't you set did up what Trump. You just to be clear here, guys. Just, just to be record. clear. He actually was... I don't know who Ali is, and that's why I'm generally being like, who the hell is Ali here? Yeah. You mentioned it multiple times. He don't even I hope know. you guys would clarify this. He actually was like, hey, I, I, I agree with you being deplatformed. I don't yeah. agree. I empathize with you. And then he comes but, in with the personal attack. Well, I think that's just no, it's not how people no. debate. Hey, but, that's so what's, not a, a what's the point here, though, guys, gentlemen? I, I, just, I just find it rich that, you know, that, that you're doing this, Nick, because I, I think doing that... What? Nick, in your Telegram group, you've extensively made the joke that you're using comedy as a cover to shield you, that these people are all stupid. They don't figure out what you're doing. But, it, but you know what you're doing. And I think Michael was what right. What am I doing? You're really actually pushing hate and bigotry, man. Which is what? Hate against whom? Definitely towards Jewish people. In what way? I just got done saying I have Jewish friends. I, Pearl is my friend. I was on Pearl's show. Did you see when Pearl got... Uh, attacked on Piers Morgan. I did, yeah. And if you looked at and if you looked at Pearl's uh, Twitter, she literally put a Jewish guy on her Twitter and said, "I can't wait to have you back on the show." I made jokes on women for about two hours, three hours straight mm -hmm. in London a month ago, and and she laughed. That's great. How no, am I pushing hate? Hold on, and she laughed. So when she made a song about the Jewish people, Which I we said, have. You know, "We'll play the clip." I said, "I said." I said, okay, fine. I mean, just like Chappelle made jokes about Jewish people. I said, fine. But, but, but I think, you know, to, to Pearl's credit, she's here making songs that are, I found offensive, but I supported her mm -hmm. freedom of speech. Well, why was that offensive? Why was that song offensive? Well, let's play the clip and we can have this conversation. Yeah. Did you want to weigh in before we yeah, play the clip? I just want to say one more thing. Well, don't go off topic because we're going to go to this well, clip. But can I defend yeah. myself a little yeah. bit? Well, I mean, well, I mean, how about this, guys? Since, well, since I'm on your guys' show, when can I play the clip that we're talking about here? <laughs> about five minutes. When can I play the clip that we've teed up we so, that we'll you guys are literally out. discussing? We'll let you you guys tell me how to run my show. We'll let you know. How do you claim that you are not sexist? And look, I'm, a, I'm not a feminist by any means, believe me. But how can you claim that you're not sexist when you say comments and you mean them 
like women should not go to college. Is that not what does sexism mean to you? Would the average person or the average female, Republican, Democrat, black, white, green, blue, who has gone to college, would they be offended by something like that that you you believe? I'm not saying you shouldn't say it. You have the right to say it. I know. But is that not what you is is that not offensive? Okay. What 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 does that mean? Offensive? When I say that women should be mothers instead of go to college, how does that offend you? No, you said women shouldn't go to college, and we talked about education. <laughs> That's what I just said. You're but living proof said, of why women should go to college. Let me just tell you that. I'm living proof why women shouldn't go to college. Yeah, because wait, wait, wait. College if, if, you, if you don't want the personal tax, then don't give a person. If you don't want the personal tax, then don't give a person. What if I said that you're being personally attacked? You've been paying attention. What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being personally attacked? What if I said that you're being weird at this you point. You said it's offensive and I said what's offensive about saying women should stay at home and raise families instead of go to college and you said that's not what you said. You said women shouldn't go to college. You did say that. That can be taken and I'm saying, in how's a million that offensive? other ways. I'm saying how's that offensive? If you go back to what he said, he, he, he was correlating the two and saying the reason why they shouldn't go to college is right. because he believes in reinstilling those values. Well, just okay, so how's that I've offensive? Been, okay, so if I've been out of college for now 10 years and I'm still not married with children, how is that? How, how is did me offensive? going to college impact not having a family? And Well, you don't have a family. Right. So how did that impact? How did me going to college? And then you talk about God and your God fearing. What about God's role in finding a partner? What about God's timing? What about those things? I'm asking you simply so, because you said it's offensive. How is what I said offensive? You said that women should not go to college. I know. How is that offensive? Because women, if they want to go to college, should want to go to college. They should be able but, to but go to college. But how does that offend people? Why is that offensive? You don't think that that would be offensive to women if if Well, if you're answering the question said, with a question. You said it. How is it offensive? Because it's people should be able to pursue what they want to pursue and and you can believe you're that but it's not saying, can, can, can you're I, basically saying that I, women shouldn't be can educated I try to, can I try to sell this real quick and it's just a disagreement of beliefs what she's saying is a woman's right to be educated has some place in, in weight versus her ability to have children. And what you're saying, and I don't disagree with you, which is, is she, if she gets educated, the likelihood of her putting off childbirth is there. So it's one of these things, six dozen, one half dozen, uh, six and one, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm fucked up, sorry. Well, the, one of the situations here is when you say this, what you find offensive is the concept of him saying that you can't have children and that this is pushing it back and uh, you should have the choice. And what you're saying is that shouldn't be offensive at all because you're just making Business. a statement and that's your opinion. That's it. Because otherwise, you guys are just going to keep saying the yeah, same by, thing. Over by the way, guys, here's the deal, because we're going to move on. Here's the deal. Here's what I think. You think that women shouldn't go to college, yes? Yeah. You think that women should, should go to college. Do whatever they want to do. Here's what I'll say. <laughs> I think that women should 1 million percent have the freedom to choose what they want to do with their life. Yeah. At the same time, I do think that women should put a way bigger priority on having more family values, motherhood, and being a good wife and being a good mother than being a boss babe. So, but right. at the same so time, middle ground. at the same time, uh, you know, agree. if they choose to not have kids and not have a family, I've argued with Chelsea Handler online about this. That's their choice to their detriment. Wow. That's my opinion. So, so, I, I, so think that, I think there's a middle ground. But I think I think one of the other things is like you said before, you want men and women as teenagers to get married and start yeah, having children. Absolutely. You want them as teenagers to start having babies. Yeah. yeah. Nick, Nick, you said you would actually marry... And now it's back to... And this personal attack... No, no, but Nick, you, Nick, you did... Nick, you said you were, you were ready that you would one day marry a teenage girl. And that actually makes sense because, you know, you Are look you like a teenage a boy again? that would probably molest himself. Okay. And there it is again with the personal attacks. Maybe this is a reason for anti-Semitism, I think. My well, this, I, I, because you're a very obnoxious person. I came here respectfully polite, and you're coming on here with personal attacks, drive-by shots. You're getting, def you're getting def the defensive again totally about the child. Yeah, the whole whole I came here for a debate, and yeah, you come well, on here saying I, I look like a teenager, and th this is not well, oh, you guys, I mean, you, I mean, you do look like you have a micro penis. Okay. okay. And there guys, yeah, here, here's what we're going to do here. Guys, here's what we're going to do here. Let's keep this high level. 
I'm sorry. Okay. That's super high no, level. No, meaning yeah. let's keep it high level. And I what I'll say is let's, let's avoid Nick. the I'm personal sorry. attacks. Yeah, I agree. No, you're not I agree. What, what I will you say is. I'm just saying you respect me because Nick, it's you just don't. comedy. Nick, it's just sensational. But that's there fine. <laughs> but what I will say is like, you did also go to like, I don't give a fuck what this guy is. He's just a brown dude. I don't know, whatever. I don't care that he's well, Jewish or not. I don't know who not. he is either. So, but that's my point. You went to the lowest, like, well, maybe that's why people don't like Jews. Like, I'm, after that's a, a, after call me I get it. I get it. Nick, Nick, you straight And that up, was low class on okay. his end. But that's like if you did something that I didn't agree with. I'm like, you know, those fucking Catholics this again. Like that, that. This is a great show. Okay. Adam, Adam, Nick. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> guys, here's what we're going to do. Nick, Nick, you're, 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 you're right. Adam, I'm the Zoom call before Adam, you're Nick, right. Nick, can you at least address this? You literally said that the entire country of India smells like shit. That's true. It does smell bad. You're going to tell me <laughs> Delhi doesn't smell bad? They got a billion and a half people, and they're all crammed together on one train. It doesn't smell bad? It's the curry. Come on, man. With okay, spices. Can I, can it's I, spices. Can I, can I, what's can good for the goose is what's good for the gander, yeah, man. Okay. Just, hey, Nick, and I'm playing We're into about it, to get to uh, Super yeah. Chats. Nick, By the way, good. everyone, we're about to get read Super but, Chats no, in, in, in 30 cool. seconds. Nick, I, I totally agree with you. No personal attacks. I, I don't want to do that. But I'm just thinking, like, when I was 24 years old. I, I, I didn't enlist into the U.S. military until I was 26. And I didn't have my life figured out. And I'm trying to have empathy for your situation because you've made some pretty life-altering decisions before you're 25 years old, True. right? There's certain things that I'm sure, I don't know if you wish you could take back, but you're getting a lot of heat, right? And this is going to probably follow you for the rest of your life. You'd, you'd agree with that, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So my, my, my question is, you mentioned before you, there was a possible potential offer for you to work for the Daily Wire. You were a fan of Ben Shapiro. And then all of that was taken away. And I was, uh, just, just me, I'm speaking anecdotally, maybe you can say the same thing, Adam, if this has been your experience. In my early 20s, I was very impressionable, much more so than I am now at 45 years old, much more, uh, mm -hmm. more so now than I am as a military veteran. I was very impressionable. Do you think that like, the extreme nature to which you go from one end to another may have had like, uh, uh, a, a, an extreme impact on you and maybe some overcompensation that happened? Because cause I can't imagine being the age you were to have that level of, uh, opportunity taken from you, do you think that that could have like an extreme impact on your opinions? No, because I can tell you precisely how I get from one point to another. Okay. I mean, that, that's the thing is a lot of people, whenever somebody has views like me, which are so contrary to the establishment, they say the only reason a young person or an intelligent person could go against the system is because, well, obviously something is wrong with them, you know, or they're, no, no, the well, hang on, hang on, hang on, okay. or, or, you know, something personal happened sure. to them, or, you know, in other words, that it came from something other than inquiry. But in my case, like I said, I was a person who, I mean, I was really huffing the propaganda from Daily Wire and PragerU and all these groups. And then I realized I wasn't getting the full story. I realized there was a totally other angle, there was a totally different angle to it. And like I said, it was my inquiry into that topic, which is why that was taken off the table in the first place. And I'll tell you just a quick example. In December, 2016, this is, this is really a big part when it started. They were calling Obama anti-Semitic because he instructed our ambassador to the UN to abstain from a Security Council vote condemning Israel's settlements in the West Bank. And I said, how is it, they're calling him anti-Semite. They're saying he hates Jews because he instructed a diplomat to abstain from a vote, which by the way is our official policy. It's our official policy since 67 that we think the civilian settlements are illegal, which is what the UN was condemning. So we were doing something consistent with our policy, and yet roundly in conservative circles, they said, well, he hates Jews. He did that because he hates Jews. And I said, wait a second, I don't like Barack Obama. I don't they like do that him for as much every as president, guy. though. Biden's catching heat with Netanyahu, Trump, even though he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv uh, to, to, to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It, yet his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, his wife is like, Obama... George, every president's going to get all sorts of allegations. We know that. Right. But, but the point is, as I said, how is this any different from when somebody gets called racist for saying something that isn't really racist? Mm -hmm. How is it different from being called Islamophobic for saying something that's not what, you know, all Nick, the other things. Let me ask you okay, straight up. because we're gonna on. Nick, let me ask okay. you. And then we move on. I'm going to let you answer this. Ready? Yes. Here we go. Then we move on. Okay. Nick Fuentes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the South cast. <laughs> Are you a racist? Uh, no. Okay. Are you anti-Semitic? No. Okay. Are you Islamophobe? No. Do you hate gays? No. Okay. Uh, is there any single individual group you hate more than others? No. I, I okay. love all people. Do you think, uh, do you hate black people? No. Okay. Do you think India smells? 
That I do. Okay, I do there we go. And that's what we'll go with. This. <laughs> All right. Um, the curry. At this point, we will read our super chats. Thank you for being here. Thanks for taking the heat. Thanks for everyone be here. Let's keep it classy like Ron Burgundy. Um, Nat, <sighs> hooked on phonics, work for Nat. Yeah. Amy, thank you. Lovely. Catalina, I don't know why the hell you went to college, girl. But we'll figure that out later. Good question. Uh, yeah, actually, well. Um, Should have done hair. Nick, Nick, you and I probably agree on a lot. Hold on. We do. I should have done hair. I'm Jewish. No, I'm, I'm Jewish, but you probably agree super with me. We do. I realized that at the beginning. I'm not the bad guys. guy gonna you think I am. I'm going to read the super chats. Just keep attacking Just in case. Guys, guys, guys. I'm not the bad guy you think I am. Read the super chats. I don't, I don't know you. Um, by the way, for those of you just joining us, yes. we got Nick, we got Amy, we got Michael, we got Catalina, we got Alpha King Nima. Um, this is a, a unique show. We're having a discussion, high level. We got Malik, ones and twos. Malik. Boom, Can't, quick camera shot. Hey, Malik, he's here. Nat's here. Hi. Um, we're not doing the chat, the live chat today. If you would like to make comments, questions, anecdotes, stories, or simply donate some money to the show. We love it. Um, we are only doing super chats. This is Nat's portion of the show here we go. where she can show that her learning to read has worked <clears throat> out well for her. All right, get my reading skills together. Well, thank you guys all for the super chats. We've got lots to go through, so I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, we've got the first one, Maury, get Nick a girlfriend and watch how quick he stops the race baiting. Matthew West, L. Nick had to cry destiny to remove because he was afraid of the challenge. It's a show scripted. Uh, Richard. Say it again. Um, can, can you have L. restream Nick. just pull, pull, pull them up on the screen? No? Um, no, no, that's fine. Not, Go ahead. Not this for this episode. El Nick, we had a uh, El Nick had to cry for Destiny to be removed because he was afraid of the challenge. It's a show scripted. You didn't want Destiny enough. on the stream, right? Well, he said he was never going to associate with me ever again. Okay. So well, by said, the way, real quick, because we are going to go fast. What is the story you and Destiny? You've done some debates. You were friends. You didn't want him to do the panel. What, yeah, what, yeah. What's I going mean, on? So last year we did a couple of debates, and then he said, "Well, I'll never do a thing ever with him again." And I said, "Okay." And then he reiterated that in May. I think it was May 29th. He said, I'm, "I will never associate with Nick Fuentes, John Zerka, etc." Then when I go on Fresh and Fit, mm. when it gets 100,000 views, oh well, then he shows up and says, "Well, now mm. I want to be on." So I said, I'm not going to let this guy cloud chase if he's, you know. So you're he saying he's an opportunist? He's not going to associate. Yeah. That's okay. I'm not, gotcha. not going to play that. But you right, guys now. were close then friends we, before. Are you not friends anymore? We were best friends. Yeah. You, you and Destiny you, were yeah, best guys, friends. We were tight, you know. I mean, you we, and Destiny were best friends. Yeah, because we're, we're very similar in many ways. Like, we're both sexist. We both have the same <laughs> views about teenagers. <laughs> we're both Hispanic. We're both I don't know if that's exactly how I would summarize <laughs> we had waffles. Does it does it make how you? Much it, how much of this is satire? I'm a little. I'm joking. Does, okay, it, does, it, make you, I'm like, does it make you sad that up. you're not best friends with him anymore? Uh, it does. Yeah, because unironically, though, I um, I did actually want to be his friend, but he he really sees me as his enemy. He's like, you know, you're right wing, I'm left wing. So I have to destroy you. Gotcha. And I'm like, you know, the cameras are off. Hey, can, if, if we could make something work out, like say tomorrow, would you be willing to do it? If we just hang out, chill. I mean, I mean, we could live stream it or whatever. Would you be yeah, willing to do maybe. it? Maybe. Yeah, it depends on what. Okay, it is. I'll talk to you afterwards. Yeah, all right, totally we'll talk good. about it. Awesome. Uh, don't be brokering deals on my show yeah, without right? me getting yeah, a broker. Yeah, okay. hey, we'll listen, be on oh Michael, listen, that's the not the way this works. Hey, the cross can broker deals yes. too, pal. Okay. <laughs> um, but but just random question, um, not followers, subscribers. How many close friends do you have these days? Like a hundred. You have good friends. Yeah, because we have a really solid network. Gotcha. I mean, all the people like me. And is that the this word that I just learned today? Groypers. Is that is that the what is it? Groiper, yeah. Groiper. Yeah. That is the crew. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're, you're claiming that crew. Yeah. That's okay. My gotcha. Crew. I didn't. Right. Those are my people. And then how would you summarize those people? Well, they just like me. They're followers. No, but like, them. what is that? Uh, well, they're uh, they're people who watch my show. No, but like, what do they believe in? They believe in what I believe in. Honestly, like the conviction is me. Yeah. In so far as I'm But what do you, I'm gotcha. still struggling to understand what you actually believe in instead of it's I just know. the you next I struggle show. to understand a lot of things. I, I believe in Catholicism. I believe in America first. I believe in traditional gender roles. I believe but in. But do you uh, believe, and we can all, we can agree on those things, but do you think that you would be more effective for a generation and generations to come if you were a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say couth in your statements, but just, I just feel that, <laughs> I think that we all, we believe, I just, I, I feel that you could have been so much more effective 
and who you are if you stop making it about you and start making it about those beliefs in that movement. They made it about me. Hey, uh, to Catalina, be, to, are you basically saying that you don't want to go on a date with Nick? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, for the record, would you ever go on a date with a girl who's not a virgin? Uh, no. You would not? Okay. No. Uh, super chats. All right, I'm going to read them. All yeah, right, sorry. so then we have... Um, this is her time to shine, guys. We're taking it from her. I feel bad. <laughs> then we have uh, Richard Percival, uh, Big 07 to Tyrion, uh, for keeping the queer destiny off the great show. Then we have Chipotle. Hey, Nick, why did you moan, cry about not wanting destiny on? Afraid you'd get um, banked again. Then we have 2-Bit. Nick accumulated homosexual destiny live in front of one million people. Nick won. Well, win, won or win, wham. And we have Yo. Thanks for the super chat. Thanks for not bringing annoying hall monitor Destiny on. Mm -hmm. Nick already destroyed him in front of 100K viewers. Bye bye, Steven. Jack S. Uh, Nick, tell the dummies about the uh, Allied bombing destroying supply lines, thus starving the prisoners of Axis powers. GB struck first. No order was ever given to kill JS. Warned on six mil JS in Europe. Then we have A. Nick is a genius, destined for greatness or death by Mossad, CIA. Respect and thanks to Adam for putting Nick on, even though he's Jewish. Shout out to you for the first super chat um, on Saucecast. Then we have Mateo. Nick, be careful. Uh, this guy is known for surprise, I guess. He acts like he won't know. Shout out to Fresh and Fit. Then we have Cherry Reaper Gaming. Nick, what's your biggest challenge facing humanity today? Unfriendly hood. If you put your trust in Jesus, you can be forgiven no matter how evil you or how far you feel God uh, feel from God. God is willing to accept you. Uh, and then we have another one, Purple Virus. Nick, who you marry hot Ethiopian uh, Christian or an equally hot Jewish white girl oh. with love from another Nick? <laughs> so hold on, what's the question? Read it again. Uh, Would he marry a, a Christian hot, Filipino a or hot. white girl who's not Christian? Interesting. Said, I thought I said Ethiopia. Didn't it Ethiopia? Yeah, it said e hot Ethiopian Christian or equally hot Jewish white girl. Oh, Ooh. brother. Well, but the uh, Jewish and white, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> uh, probably Ethiopian, honestly. Okay. No, okay. I, don't, I don't know. No, maybe the Jew... I don't know. Maybe Why are you just, so stumped right now? We gotta get the problem? Because I want to have a kid who's... On, is it, who's what's the level of attraction? attraction? Is atheist white girl or uh, uh, Christian... Uh, oh, atheist, atheist white girl. I just make her Catholic. You just make her Catholic. Yeah. So, gotcha. But, but to, to you, you probably identify more with the race than you do with the religion? Well, they're both important to me. Yeah. You okay. know, I mean, that's like an either-or question. By the way, guys, that's the next topic. So because, because, keep going. Yeah. Okay. Then we have, um, thank you for hosting, Nick. Free speech, Christ is king. Ice, run from it. Dread it. Destiny arrives all the time. Keep running, Nick. It doesn't matter. Uh, Axis Fiber. Axis Fiber. Ethan, Ralph, one. Total Catboy eradication. Then we have Based, 0909. Christ is king. W for free speech panel. Uh, then we have Unfriendly Hood. Going to church once a month or even once a week or even every day isn't enough to get you to heaven. Doing that doesn't make up for the bad things you do. You need forgiveness from God. The only path it, to forgiveness Agreed. is Jesus. Then we have uh, BBDEI of Eugenics. Uh, Pearl saved Frontis Carrierdo. Then we have Jack S. Classic Jew Tactics. Uh, Wyrda, uh, that's an itch move to lump someone into child horn. Who had nothing to do with it. Then we have Ice, LOL, Nick's getting pissed. Uh, he's going to cry and run now. We'll add these people to the list uh, to not debate in the future, just like Destiny. Ace 23, the Jews, uh, the Jews showing their true colors. Uh, Pop Daily, what a dumb statement by the man on the right. First statement, he resorts to personal attacks. He's not... He is not intellectually fit for the conversation. Don Juan Plague is zero. The panel is interesting. Sartain, nothing against you, but if you don't support people being deplatformed, tell your friends from Sticky Paws blocked me from your stream. Sorry, but Trollo is a hypocrite. Uh, then we have Don Plague is zero again, a feminist conservative. What a contradiction. Uh, then we have him again. Nick, what's happened between you and Milo? Then we have Yo, Nima fits you. Uh, Nima fits so many of the stereotypes, vulgar, filthy mouth. All right, obsessed with gross, transgressive sex stuff. What an absolute sicko. Then we have Martin777. Nick is correct. Jesus is king. Then we have Mike. Uh, to the panel, stop saying Judeo-Christian. It is a con contradiction. Judeo is the hatred that killed the Messiah. Christian yeah, but they both have the Ten Commandments. That's why I always said that. Christian they is the They both have the Ten um, hey, You want to check for loves. yourself. The Ten Commandments is in the Torah, and it's in the Old Testament. You, you, maybe, you, maybe you could read for once. Maybe you could check that out. It's on about Jesus, though. Then we have, uh, it says, uh, the Christian Ten Commandments? is... The no, love. no. Christianity is about Jesus. Oh, okay. Christian is the love that... Uh, Christian is the love that loved us, the point of death, so we may reach heaven. 
Uh, Rombax Rooks, Andrew Tate, 711. Nick always wins. Uh, then we have Mike again to the pin. Oh, that's the same chat. Uh, then we have Sprunger uh, Brogans. Cancer Proof Paul told us that Nick hid in association with Ale Alexandra uh, for months after the pedophilia allegations. Alex always wins. Uh, then we have TWPB, uh, W Nick. Then we have Martin77 again. Nick is correct. Okay. Jesus is king. Cancel proof, okay. W Nick. Thanks for having him back on YouTube. Uh, Sprung or Brogans, ask Nick about the cunning gang of America's First and what cunning means. Also, ask him what Mr. Krabs 9000 account of his liking trans stuff. Then we have Mies with a few Zs. Uh, thank you, Nick, for all you do. Uh, then we have Hood Hippie. It seems to it seems like a few on the panel have a personal vendetta towards Nick instead of being respectable, questioning for understanding and finding common ground seems and until antagonist. Uh, then we have Richard Perci uh, Percival. Uh, you watch Top Warren? No, I don't. Why do you? Why are you being defensive? Sprogner Bargains. Nick works closely with Ali Alexander, aka Ali Akbar, Carl Rove's old boyfriend who was found first sexting three American first members who were underage. Nick worked with him several more months. Uh, then we have Wolf's Gang D, calls you pedo, why are you getting defensive? Then cries out of pain. And we have, oh, we did that one again. Then we have BBDEI Eusogenics, Adam, these chats restrictions are worse than Auschwitz. Uh, then I'm going to, what I'm gonna do from there is I'll put a pause there and mm -hmm. then we'll, we'll pick it up from there and I think I'll be reading uh, chats $10 and more because we're getting a lot of them and I okay. want to we'll do the, We'll do one last chat at the end of the show. That was pretty 50-50. Okay. With what? That, the chats. I, I was just, I mean, there were a lot All of right. personal attacks but Guys, they seem to be on both about, sides. I'm not used to seeing that. On we a, have a on little over a half, half hour left and I want to get through a few topics. Yeah. So if any point, I want to move on because I want to hit a couple different Copy topics. All. Cool? Cool. Uh, Guys, are you okay on my show? Let me play this one clip we've referenced. Let's do it, man. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We've been waiting so you you've referenced curly hours, things, bro. quote unquote. She saved your career. You saved her career. I don't. Whoever I think made that's that a comment. Super chat. So. Yeah, super was. chat. Whatever yeah. it is. Pearl, who's obviously been on the show multiple times here, um, has made a name for herself in the Red Pill community. They label her the female Andrew Tate. Yeah. I'll let you guys disagree on that or agree on that. She's been making her rounds on Pierce Morgan lately. The first debate was rather. Uh, you know, feminism has been good or bad, whether women should even vote or not. We forget, she she went up to you on college, bro. No, vote. I agree with that. Okay, that women should not vote? Yeah, I've been saying that forever. Not vote? Yeah. Wow. Oh, very You're few talking to a potential vote. congresswoman right here. Well, she lost, so okay. not really. Um, I feel the tension. Anyway, <laughs> let's play the clip of her on, um, on Pierce Morgan. I believe you have the timestamps. Let's play that clip. Play it. Don't forget the audio. Why can't we talk about the without getting kicked Back off up 10 of seconds. YouTube? All right, commentator Nick Fuentes before later deleting it. Damn. Why Why can't we you know what? Sorry. Start from the beginning. The Sorry Talked about, about that, Sue Piswell. Sue Pearl Davis is the self styled feminist influencer who's creating major buzz online with a contrarian view. She's Yo, appeared Pierce in a couple of on, on this, this show. It's called Uncensored After All. We welcome any honestly held opinions. But this week, she's facing a major backlash by posting a song titled Why Can't We Talk About the Jews, which she dedicated to far right commentator Nick Fuentes before later deleting it. She looks kind of shocked there. Yeah. Why Bro. Can't we talk about okay, the... go to the next one. It's a song. We'll play. This is the song. Listen, all right, play it. Go ahead. Play the song. Without getting kicked off of YouTube. Now, I'm not saying Hitler was a good guy. But I kind of want to know why. Oh, there's all these conspiracy theories, and the more they right. talk, I think. Give her every right to play that song. It's just actually not a good song. Bro. I love you, but that, like, that's hurting my eardrums. I but fully endorse her right to sing the song. Is there another timestamp, Malik? Uh, yeah, there's another video. Okay, but there was not another timestamp for that video. No, you just okay. sent it to uh, one minute. And that's his Pearl's response. Are we in a society where we can say what speech is allowed and what speech isn't allowed? So I get on. I'm a bit nervous because they just switched the guests, so I know nothing about the girl I'm going on with. And other than like what you know, you Google in 10 seconds, you get on 
and Pierce says I'm gonna go hard on you this time. Something like that. And I'm like, oh really? And I'm shocked because his producers have said all week he's on my side. So I'm like, what? Okay, this is gonna be a different type of interview. They start the interview, then they falsely accuse me of writing a song inspired by Nick Valentes. You know, for someone that has millions of dollars backed by a network, why do you not have a research team? So either, either you know that I didn't attribute it to Nick, or you were just trying to spin a narrative. Why are we in a society okay. where we can- So Nick, your name was mentioned multiple times by Pearl, by, by Pierce Morgan. Typically when someone mentions a name, we give you a chance to respond. So here's my question. Uh, are you amazing music producer now? Are you planning on doing a duet with Pearl? What is happening? I might, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not really musical, but honestly, I didn't know anything about this song. It was not dedicated to me. You know, mm -hmm. I saw, I actually just saw it on Twitter when she posted it, and I okay. said, what is she doing? Because, you know, I text her all the time, and, and I tell her, like, when it comes to this stuff, you're going to get backlash. I even told her when I went on her show, I said, you're mm -hmm. going to get backlash for doing this, and I think people don't really realize what that means until it happens, and mm -hmm. I think, you know, so... It definitely happened. She got what's a lot your, of What's your relationship with Pearl now? Friends, colleagues, We're friends. constituencies, We're friends. friends. Yeah. Pearl uh, made a major name for herself. She also went to college. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's also building a business. She also played sports. She also, she played, also played professional sports. She as also, a woman. up until played. today, has the right to vote. Yeah. What is Pearl doing wrong? Well, she's not doing anything wrong. I think she's uh, the only thing she's doing wrong is she should be married and have kids, but no, but I agree with her. And she agrees with me mm -hmm. on a lot of this stuff with the, the women, because she's in the red. Well, obviously that's and, clearly her message. That, yeah, that we're not yeah. even gonna get into that. We know her yeah, message. Absolutely. Um, but, and again, I've had Pearl on the, on the show. We've had agreements, disagreements. Pearl can come on the show anytime she's in town. She knows we're cool. Mm -hmm. How is she gonna build a YouTube business, but also have kids? Yeah, she's gonna have to choose. She's going to have to make a decision. But, uh, you know, I've seen it happen before. I've had friends who are YouTubers, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. and then they go and have kids, and then they, they quit. I've seen it happen before. There were yeah. actually two prominent examples. Uh, Lauren Southern, she was a big right-wing YouTuber back in the day, mm -hmm. and allegedly she said she was retiring to have a kid. There was some other stuff going on. And then she pops back up a year later. Hey, remember me? I'm back on my YouTube channel. Uh, and she got this divorce and has all these problems mm -hmm. and whatever. Uh, but I've known other, I knew another girl I don't want to name. She's not active anymore. She was a big activist in the right wing scene, got married, had kids. No one's ever heard from mm -hmm. her again on the internet. I talk got to her it. still, but. Let me ask you guys a question real quick because I want to get to the next topic. Uh, the song, as not good of a song as it was, I fully endorse the right you can sing this song. Why can't we talk about the Jews? Oh, man. Okay. Jewish. Don't cancel me. <laughs> uh, does anyone here think that she should not be able to sing that song? What do you think, I, Nima? I, you know, because I know Pearl, and she's, I've seen her staff at her home, yeah. and it's pretty diverse. And, um, you know, she was really welcoming to me, and she knows I'm Jewish, yeah. you know, and, and, and I watched her repeatedly. I made jokes at her expense. Mm-hmm. And she didn't once complain, you know? So like, what sort of person would I be if the moment she made a joke about Jewish people yep. that I snap back and say, and that's okay. And, and I actually think that breeds anti-Semitism. And I think when Chappelle made jokes yeah. on SNL, the best thing that happened was that he was permitted to do it. Yeah. I think when you ban people uh, like him, Nick, it's the worst you can do because you make it like a forbidden fruit. And, and that, that, that's pretty much where I stand on that. So I do think he should have his freedom of speech I, as well as Pearl. Is, he, is there any reason that that song? No, Real I quick, just, quick I, response. I think it's sad that we've gotten to a point in American culture that people have to do this and then subsequently then try to get 15 seconds of fame or make money. It's like we have got, this is literally idiocracy. She should have the right to say, you know, what she wants, she shouldn't be censored. But the fact that we have gotten to this point, mm -hmm. that this is a topic of debate, shows you exactly where American culture is. And not to mention, 
the left and far left progressives, the culture wars, they love this stuff. You want to know why? Because this is the kind of stuff people like Nick, for example, are the reason the left loves people like Nick because then that they can take somebody like him and take his comments, take what he says and then spin it to that is what every America first oh, they, yeah, person do believes I mean, in. Do, do you feel responsible? Oh, that's an interesting question. Do you feel a responsibility for that? Because there is a lot of commentary where they almost make you like the boogeyman for all right wing conservatives. And even though what you believe they're saying is not true, do you see how it could hurt the, your side of the political? Well, I'm, I'm not conservative. I'm not a Republican. If I hurt the Republican Party, good. I mean, I support Trump. I don't But he's going to be the candidate for the Republican Party, so yeah. that's kind of yeah, like talking that's... out of both sides yeah. of your mouth. That's a big difference. You are but hurting. He's going to be the Republican nominee. And you are but hurting him. But don't you understand him. the difference between Trump and the establishment? I do, between MAGA. Yeah, we all do. 100%. Okay. I wasn't a point. But what, can, what party is Trump? Republican. Okay. So. And I support Trump, but I mean, if... But, but you the question was him. about... Hang on. But the question yeah. was about... Uh, whether I'm hurting Republican candidates or something, and I, mm -hmm. I say I don't, I don't care about Republicans because my message is the answer to liberalism. It's the only message that isn't liberal. What Republicans are pushing is liberalism driving the speed limit. They don't have any problem with transsexuals. They want to put an age limit yeah, on Yeah, but it. Trump's not pushing that, and you are directly hurting him and undermining his campaign and what his movement is and the people who really do believe in him when you sit there and try to be a surrogate or an okay, ambassador Kanye. to what you okay. claim to be uh, part of the movement. That's not part of the movement. Really? Were you at Stop the Steal? You were at January 6th? I was not there. Okay, because I was supporting the president. And that's why I got put on a no-fly list. So, you know, maybe you should support the president then. Yeah, I don't, know, I that, I don't a... know that politically that helped the Republican Party, though. It's January 6th. Well, it's not about helping the party. It's about it was the right thing to do because, uh, well, well, well the original, we can't it... actually get into this because we're on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. For well, sure. look, I was well, here, a, I was I a wanna, presidential I go appointee here. for the Trump administration. Okay, here's what I want to go here. You brought up Trump. Uh, you famously had a meeting with Trump, allegedly. Yeah. I'll let you talk about this. Yeah. Um, Two stories here, if you don't pull up that clip and then we'll tell this. So regarding Trump, regarding politics, but more specifically regarding Kanye, you mentioned Milo earlier. Um, November 2nd, 2022, Donald Trump hosted yourself and Kanye. At the time, you were Kanye's campaign manager, I want to say? No, I was uh, comms director. Well, Communications director. Potentially. I was perspective. Potentially. Yeah. You were working with Kanye. Right. Formally or informally? Uh, informal. Well... Informally. Was he paying you at all? Yeah, I was being Okay, paid. so that's pretty formal. Um, you guys had dinner at Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence here in Florida. The meeting was at Kanye's request. Uh, Wes said that Trump was really impressed with Nick Frontes. Trump released a statement after the fact, contacting Mueller in the week to arrange the visit. Uh, Wes, uh, Wes quote-unquote, unexpectedly showed up with three of his friends who I knew nothing about, with who Trump dined. Uh, the dinner was quick and uneventful. Trump further elaborated several days later that he met with West uh, to help a seriously troubled man who just happens to be black, uh, who has been decimated uh, by his business and is virtually everything else in his life. Um, then you've got Kanye um, recently uh, allowed back on Twitter, I want to say. Elon Musk unbans the account of Kanye West. Yay. Kanye, when you see this, we're calling you yay, bro. Yay as he pledges to make X the most valuable financial institution in the world. Um, Nick, make sense of what's going on. I mean, we have saw Kanye go on rants that make you look like a JV squad of <laughs> anti-Semitism. Like, he went there, full on. You met with Trump. You're a huge Trump fan. He sort of walked back the meeting, right? He's like, yeah, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, I, you know. He unexpectedly showed up. Uh, make sense of what the relationship is with Kanye, what happened with Trump, um, and what's really going on. Well, they had a dinner scheduled. I came out there to L.A. Uh, to work with the A on political stuff, and that was... So the dinner happened the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. They reached November. out to you? Uh, it was a long story how we got connected. It was okay. through a couple of intermediaries to, to Ye, that is. Mm -hmm. And so I came out there maybe four or five days before the dinner. And the night before the dinner, we had a big session in the Donda headquarters, the Yeezy headquarters. And we were talking about politics and everything. And I really shined. You know, they were fielding questions. And I, unsurprisingly, it wasn't even about 
those topics that Ye was talking about is actually about uh, how do we deal with the issue of gay marriage? And I said, well, you don't attack gay marriage. I said, you promote traditional marriage mm -hmm. instead. And anyway, so he loved that. And he invites me, Ye invites me to go to the dinner with him the next day. And he thought it would be funny. He, he wanted to fly Spirit Airlines to the dinner. He just thought that would be funny. He's like, I'm going Kanye? to meet the president on Spirit Airlines. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in coach. Amy, you like that one? <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we wound up... The reservation got messed up, and so we wound up flying United, though, and we got there. And I wasn't even expecting to be at the dinner because I was told that I would probably be intercepted at some point because maybe you're if on Trump, a no-fly list. Well, not even necessarily that, but mm. people are aware of me in the GOP, like uh, Catalina Loft. They don't want me to have that level of access to the president, and so I thought someone's going to intercept me. I'm not going to be able to sit down. But he came out at the at the Mar-a-Lago Club. He invited us to dine, mm -hmm. and we sat down, and we had the dinner. And it was relatively uneventful. I mean, the, the most newsworthy thing that came out of it is that Ye actually did ask him to be his running mate, because that was, that was the thrust of the meeting. Is Kanye asked Trump to be, to be his so like president. So Kanye would be the president. Trump was pretty insulted by yes. that. To read the room, Kanye. <laughs> yeah. My guy. Well, yeah. once again, he thought that would yeah. be the funniest was thing. Was that tongue in cheek? I was that he, serious? I think he was being serious, wasn't he? It, well, he thought it'd be funny, but okay. it was also serious. Now, yeah. did Trump know you were coming to the dinner? No, he didn't know I was okay, coming. Okay, so it was unexpected. Well, there were now, three other people, though. Was too. it, were you, I guess, how disappointed were you that Trump walked back the meeting with you? I was actually pleasantly surprised because I thought he would fully disavow, but he didn't fully disavow. Okay. He, you know, he had to. He now, said what he had to say. You worked with Kanye. How long did you work with Kanye for? I worked with him for about six or seven months. Okay. So almost a half a year. That's mm -hmm. not like six or seven days like mm -hmm. Anthony Scaramucci when he was the uh, comms director uh, of uh, Trump's campaign. Um, so as comms director um, or campaign manager for that matter, what statements would you advise to Kanye to walk back that he's made? Oh, none of it. None of it. I thought that... Uh, you think Hitler invented the microphone? Well, I, actually, I don't know what he meant by uh, that. I don't know. I think he meant like a specific Hitler kind of a microphone. I don't think Hitler invented the microphone. Well, well, Nick, Nick, you don't, you don't, you don't think... Whoa, look at the attacks yeah, coming sorry, down guys, from this Nick, side of the panel. Got, Nick, Nick, you don't think that any of those bring in, statements... Bring in Nima. Nima's got something to no, say no, about no, Ye's Nick, comments. I, Nick, I just want to know respectfully, this, and I ask this respectfully. Do you find it difficult to find a wife that would be okay with you having a micro penis? Oh my okay. God. Bro, bro. Oh my God. Come on, Nima. Like, 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 you're making me look better the way you do that. Uh, like, no, I mean, in, I, because, in all, in all right, Nima, yeah. I mean, I mean if I was 40 years younger... Nima. Are you interested in my inches, penis? You want to go and see it somewhere? No, I, 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 I just I, I think if I was 40 years younger and you took 12 inches, 12 inches off my dick, you'd probably try to fuck Nima, that's not even a relevant conversation right now. Let's talk about it in a valid conversation. So ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I like it. I think it's helpful. Yeah, I, it's, I, whether it's good or it's bad, whether it's whatever religion, it's, it's not, that's ridiculous. a top of conversation. Uh, but you guys can go in the back and figure that out later. Mm. Oh, no promises. Okay. No promises. Okay. But <laughs> as Kanye's campaign manager, potentially, well, or communications, comps some right. of those comments were beyond well, let me shocking. Let you me would explain. say you, you, you wouldn't advise him to take back any of those comments? No, because I got interrupted here. But no, because, yeah. and here's the thing. You know, Ye is, well, well, number one, he's totally serious. Let me just say that. I'm not trying to undermine what he said, but he's also an artist, and he's somebody who is a visionary. His job is to push the society forward by saying things that are shocking. He said, he explained it on InfoWars. He said, I'm the battering ram. I blow down the door, and we have the conversation. And you know what happened as a result of all of those remarks? What, like him, don't like him, offended, a national conversation took place. And I think that a lot of people became aware of things that we don't talk about. Like, for example, the abuse of athletes and artists with contracts. Nobody mm -hmm. was talking about that before. But people wanted to beat him over the head and say, well, you can't say this and you can't say that. What about our suffering? And Ye had the wherewithal to stand up and say, well, what about abortion? What about black abortion? What about the contracts? What about these other things? But don't, don't, I understand that he does have some points. But if you ever want what you're selling to go mainstream, right? That's what we're talking about here. Look, if you want to be a 1%, like the same advice I'd give to the Green Party or the Libertarian Party or the America First White Nationalist Party, whatever it is, you have to be able to be like, listen, we can't say 
Yeah, Hitler was actually a good guy. Like, how is that ever going to go mainstream in America? Sometimes a person isn't out to create something for mass consumption right now. You yeah, know, they're out for themselves, which okay. is what... Here we go again, the genius, the, genius, the college-educated so genius. Sometimes you have to Come push on, the envelope to move the ball forward. And it doesn't, like, for trends to change, for attitudes to change, someone has to be the first mover. Somebody has to stand up and say something that at this time would be considered outrageous mm -hmm. i think oftentimes it's a pendulum effect as well and we're seeing it even with like the trans stuff right now like everything like this society just really struggles to find a balance i feel like like before yeah. it was like oh no trans people banish them to the furthest corners of society and now it's like oh let's embrace all of them and and you know kids can it's like can we ever just agree on a middle ground i think that people are responding to the extreme push from the left and it is creating some very bombastic messages in some regard but i think there's some validity coming out of it as well uh, just yeah, but, that's, how you interpret but, it. but to Nick's comments earlier, it the issue is you you took what you wanted to say for your own movement, for your own platform. Like when you mentioned, I don't want you close to the president or whatever. <laughs> I went up We're against having a hard time. I went up against uh, Adam Kinzinger, who was notoriously a rhino. There are a lot of people who just sit in the middle who don't aren't right, left, who, who do support the president and all that, but you make the majority of the people who do support the president look bad by the things that you say, even though you're trying to say that you're helping them. Hey, Nick, in in yeah. Nick, in Germany, by the way, and I'm not joking, in Germany, uh, you know, I want to have an American flag in my backyard, but the only reason, because I love America and I appreciate our veterans, and, the only, and I'm not going to, serious. Uh, and the only reason I don't put an American flag on there is because, you know, we, I live where, you know, my, my wife's grandma, where she was born on that land, she has a Nazi b symbol on her birth certificate. I've mm. seen it, okay? And she remembers American soldiers going there and giving them candy and stuff. They literally have seen what happened, and a lot of people were scared of the Nazis. A lot of the Germans were against what was going on with the Nazis. I know I've spoken to people that were alive during World War II, man. So, you know, Americans defeated the Nazis. Americans died, veterans died defeating the Nazis. So it, I do find it insulting as a guy who supports veterans, I was in a law enforcement academy as a teenager, that, that, you, that you have somehow glamorized these Nazis. And just so you know, in Germany, I'm happy to show you around. In Germany, the nationalists there, they don't like the United States, man. They're pretty, they're pretty hardcore nationalists. You say America first, they're Germany first. I'd love to see what you think about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I'd love to reply. And I appreciate it's a thoughtful Guys, this is a question. quick reply because we have one last topic. We've we, we got to wrap up. So as far as that's concerned, I, I think that if you look at the people, because my grandfather fought in World War II as well. My grandfather is Italian. He actually fought in the Pacific Theater, but he fought in World War II. And the thing is, though, all of those people, you talk about, for example, the, the trans stuff you just mentioned, take a survey of all of the people that fought in World War II. And, and I don't mean this in a glib way at all. Do you think they'd agree more with the policies of Hitler, or do you think they'd agree more with the policies of a left-wing progressive administration today? And that's not, right. and that's right. not to be glib, it's not to be funny, and it doesn't mean, I'm not talking about, you know, we disagree about the, the big thing. I'm not even talking about the racial policies. I'm talking about across the board. I mean, America back then was just as racist, if not more, than Nazi Germany. But that's so, the problem. There's, there you know, should be more of a balance. And she jumps in. There should be more of a balance, no. and you're sitting there. That's trying, because you're, you're a woman, and women build consensus. You're trying to you're trying to force somebody to say, agree with Hitler or agree with the far left progressive. That's literally what you saying, just said. No, and you're part no, of the problem of the extremism. No, well, no. just to be clear, excuse, didn't Adolf Hitler build a consensus? Didn't he get Italy and and Japan? I'm to saying join women him? women always like to say, let's find common ground. If we I, need more we, balance. We you, need a middle. And when like you, exactly. when you when you take over a country, you perform military action. You are gaining consensus. Okay, yeah. Well, if I put that's a really superficial Nick, Nick if I put an American flag in my backyard in Germany, they wouldn't like it, man. Those guys are just, those Nazi guys, man, don't like America. I'm not man. a Nazi. I'm not a no, Nazi. But, I, but I'm just letting you know. And I'm happy to show you around. And you can see they're, they're nationalists the same way you are, man. Well, and here's the thing, though. The question about Hitler is fundamentally about a narrative that has been spun up about World War II, which has been used to deconstruct 
all of the important things in society. Because they said, never again, never again, never again, we can't have strong households, we can't have strong nations, we can't have religions. You could read Karl Popper wrote the textbook on this. This is a basis for the Open Society Foundation which yep. George Soros started. And so, yep. you know, because to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. I don't even really know that much about Hitler. I'm not like a super fan or anything, but I think that he is required as a mythological figure to enforce this liberal consensus because whenever someone like Trump comes up, what do they say? Mm -hmm. Hitler. Have you been well, to Germany? Just, just, just to be clear. They call all just, Republicans guys, Hitler. Nick, just to be clear, because sure. we're going to move on. Let's be clear. Simple yes or no answer. Hitler, good guy, bad guy? That's a top. Well, there are no good and bad guys. They're just people. But well, that's not true, dude. It is true. I mean, so if you had to check one box. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm neutral on that. I'm abstaining from There's that. There's no one. neutral. You're saying that Hitler was not a bad guy. I think that you know it's. But World then you're War. questioning why people may not want you talking. There's I'm a giving lot, you well, a platform. Look, if we're gonna say Hitler bad, then I'm gonna say Churchill bad, and I'm gonna say Roosevelt bad, and I'm okay. gonna say they're all they're all bad. But if we look at him as a product of his time in that moment, you know we have to judge him with those things in mind. That's all. Okay. I mean, I don't if, know. I don't, you, him, him writing a book specifically talking about the, the demise of the Jews, I think it makes it a little different as far as the way we judge him, because I don't remember Winston Churchill doing that. Have you ever read it? I actually have. I've read Mein Kampf. It, 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 is, it, doesn't so it seems like the, the, the ramblings of a nine-year-old, actually. That's what it comes off as. But the thing is, like, you know, the reason why I would say he's bad is probably because David Irving actually admitting that he misinterpreted a memo uh, about sending a group of Jews on a train from Berlin to the Eastern Front. And David Irving said, you need to stop this one. You need to stop all Jews from being liquidated. That was Adolf Hitler's word. And he actually admits that he misinterpreted it. And it was to stop one group of Jews from being liquidated, meaning that the Nazis were liquidating Jews. That's why I would say they were probably a bad people. Well, I can't even offer rebuttal because my position is banned in 20 countries and also happens to be banned on that platform. But I'm sure yeah. that's just because your position is really strong and necessary it, it could and be. not because it, it's it bullshit. Could be. It could be, or it could have been Adolf Eichmann. What happened to David trial, Irving? Say, at, yeah, at, after torture. At, but what happened at, to David Irving? Uh, Do you know? Yeah, No, I do know what happened to David Irving. Tell, well, he, tell us. He, what he happened? lost a defamation case because he tried to use the information from Fred Leuchter, who smuggled pieces that he got out of Auschwitz in his dirty underwear. When he took his wife on a honeymoon to Auschwitz in the south of uh, Poland, and he brought the stuff back in his dirty underwear. He films himself putting it in his dirty underwear, and then he tries to say that this is scientific proof that there was not enough cyanide in there in order to kill, to kill people in those gas chambers. And the funny thing is, he didn't even tell the laboratory, they were looking for cyanide, and they still found cyanide. That's what's so crazy yeah, about it. It, would, yeah. makes it even it's just, crazier. It's guys, funny that you omitted the facts. It makes it even okay. crazier. Guys, stop. Last question, because we'll transition. This could go forever. Yeah. This is a question for Nick. <laughs> just, he can go forever. No, Nick, I, Nick, I, Nick I, bet, I bet Hitler's uh, mustache is the size of your micro Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't even God. agree with this. Like, but like, right. stop this. Nick, this question's for you, because what? this is what it is, and then we got to wrap up. Okay. So here's a study. I don't know if we have a link, but a study shows... <laughs> um, regarding sort of... Well, he did the ambush all wrong because it just looks bad when you have a bunch of people ganging up and did, the juveniles... All I said was Hitler's this, this mustache is, is the I'm size I'm of your micro penis. Here's, here's where it. I'm at. I mean, obviously, I don't think Hitler was a good guy, but that's well, your opinion. Do your thing, bro. Um, I lost people in the Holocaust, family, Sorry. family members. It's like... But that's your thing, dude. All good. Um, here's a study. Uh, that shows that more young men are deciding to be virgins than ever before. The general so so social study reveals that significant, significant rise in young male virgins in, in the U.S., with the percentage uh, nearly tripling from 10% in 2008 to 28% in 2018. You have the title of the article, Malik? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Factors include, here it is, study show. Factors include unemployment with 54% of unemployed Americans lacking a consistent romantic partner compared to 32% of employed Americans. Technology also plays a role here. Many spending excessive time on screens due to streaming video, social media, and online adult platforms like OnlyFans. Potential influencing for all ages. A couple quick questions for you. Um, I know you're banned on your virgin, mm -hmm. proudly. Till marriage. I don't know about proudly, but I'm, I'm celibate. It's consistent with my religion. Got it. Um, does, um, are you banned on dating apps? What dating apps are you on? I don't know. I don't go on dating apps. Zero. Zero no, dating apps? I mean, if I go on a dating app, 
someone's going to screenshot that and throw that on Twitter and say, look at this guy. Not a good look. <laughs> now, does your reputation help or hurt you when you meet attractive women? Well, it depends on where, you know, because I'll go into a CPAC and I get yeah. a lot of attention. Gotcha. But I'm sure if I go into any <laughs> like normal, if I went normal bar and people didn't know what I was about, maybe they'd say, gotcha. hey, what's up? But oh, wait, weren't you banned from CPAC? Here we go again. What's the beef with you? What's the beef, I, Stu? I'm just... Uh, that's a fact. Weren't you banned oh. from CPAC? Actually, it's a question. Yeah, I went to the CPAC after party in Dallas in 2021. Is that okay? Good? So well, you got Nick, attention at CPAC? From somebody that has worked in Miami Beach nightlife half my life, has a club in Miami, ain't no party like a CPAC party, so the CPAC party <laughs> don't stop. We know <laughs> that. That's true. They turn out. But, hey, play it safe. A um, couple more questions. So you meet a girl uh, at CPAC. She's kind of into you, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, porn. Do you ever watch porn? Uh, no. No, I'd stay away from that. You've never watched porn your whole life? Not never, but okay. no, but I try to stay away from it. Okay. Uh, rank the following three, if you could, uh, in terms of, um, all right, I meet a girl. Mm. Cool. Um, you want to get married. You want to have kids, mm -hmm. right? Um, what is, uh, the most important mid and then least important, um, the race, okay, same race, same religion, same political affiliation. Mm. What's the most important, meaning mm. she's a black, Catholic, Democrat. Yeah. Okay. I think you're going to say she's a black. Right. She, <laughs> I was like, okay, she, that's not politically correct. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you, know, you can't do that, she's, Adam. Uh, <laughs> she's Christian, you know, Republican. Guatemalan, whatever. Ethiopian. Go ahead. Uh, well, here's the rank thing. The rank those three in order, if you would. I wouldn't marry anyone that doesn't have all three. But okay. uh, it would probably go religion, race, political affiliation. So religion's first. Yeah, religion's She's not a Catholic or Christian. She's out. Race. Yeah, she's got to be. Second. Oh, would you marry a Protestant? No. No, okay. No, okay. I couldn't marry a Catholic. Even so, if you converted her? If I converted her, sure. Get, okay. Paint me your ideal future spouse. Mm. Dream mm. with us, Nick. Yeah. We probably even have sound effects. Well, <laughs> dream know. with us. All right, she's going to be this tall. She looks like this. This is what she's got. This is my wife. Go ahead. Well, you know, if I get too specific, I'd have problems because then I'm going to meet somebody and she's not going to hit all the boxes. Mm. No. Say, dream with us. I'm not this. I'm not that. Man. So I want dream. I want to have a great personality. <laughs> no, but I, I'm going to need her to be a virgin. I'm going to need her to be young. Fertile, meaning I want to have a lot of kids. Sure, yeah. I want her to be Catholic. I want her to be ideally Italian, um, American. Although I'm not married to that. If she, uh, no pun intended, if she uh, didn't speak English, that wouldn't be a problem. Probably be okay. a plus. Like if Catalina Loft didn't speak English, I'd probably like her a lot more. So speaking English is not a priority. And uh, ideally okay. share political views as well. Hey, gotcha. can I just bring up one thing? Sure. You mentioned before that you had a crush on a girl who was Asian. Yeah. yeah. Your dream yeah. girl was Asian, but you couldn't be yeah. with her because, because of her race. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Did, did you ever work that out? Did you, does she know she, that she's your dream girl? That's what I told. Well, I think she's figured it out because I talk mm. about it all yeah. the time. But, uh, well, I told her face to face. We were at this party, and I said, listen, like, because here's the thing. I want to have white kids. I want to have sure. kids that look like me. We have the same heritage. And I told her, I said, I'm Catholic. I don't, I don't sleep bad. around. If I was yeah. promiscuous... You know, it'd be well, a different story. The other thing, you know, it, sa it, sa it says in the Bible, even Jesus was tempted. When all those black girls were twerking on you <laughs> at Fresh and Fit, did that, did that make you maybe consider? I was tempted. You were yeah, tempted I'm by the black women. Well, all right, all Nick, that, the longer that black you wait. <laughs> I like, you know, they the are attractive. The blacker the berry, the sweeter like the juice, well. Nick. They date, you know, they yeah. like white guys. What can um, I say? Would you ever even have sex with a black girl? Um, you know, if I wasn't Catholic, yeah, I probably No, you are Catholic, so would you? No, because I wouldn't marry a black girl. You're missing out, bro. I, they have a little <laughs> bit of magic. They have a black girl magic. Okay. I'm not going to lie. We got our whole point of the show. Let me tell you something, buddy. Something tells me, Nick. I'm going to dream for a second. The first time, you ever seen uh, American Pie? The movie? Where he's like, I've, I've never had sex. What does it feel like? And that was the whole reason that the name of the movie was American Pie, Apple Pie. Something tells me when you have your first bite of pie... <laughs> Your life is going to change. All these beliefs I thought I had or didn't oh, have Nick, Nick, totally Nick, changed. Nick, do you realize also there's a lot of pressure on you, right? Because if something happens where, let's like, say, you, there's a scandal with you and a woman you aren't married with or something happens where you are with a woman who's infertile, 
Like these kind of things could happen. That's a lot of pressure you put on yourself. I mean, dude, I can't imagine at 24 the amount of pressure that you put on yourself. It's true. Well, it is a lot of pressure, but I, I don't worry about it too much because uh, I, I really do believe in you give it all to God and you just kind of let whatever. Uh, my, my grandma used to say, God will provide. Well, so okay, we're, no, we're done. Okay. Uh, we got to wrap up. Uh, thank you guys for being in. We're going to um, read the super chats and then we got to wrap up. Everyone's going to have 30 seconds to say uh, what they want to say because we got to pay some bills and PBD just walked in the building and we got to meet up. <laughs> okay. So, Nat, do your thing quickly. Okay. All right, let's start right here. Okay, so I'm reading $10 and up. Thank you for the super chats. Name was a complete clown. He's lucky Zerka isn't there. Freeman, there's no Jew hate here. Nick is simply drag nosing a real problem in the world today where one thing that necessary to discuss is also one thing that absolutely impossible to, dis to discuss. Uh, then we have Justin Bride. Uh, you're all trying so hard to uh, psycho psychoanalyze Nick and utterly failing. Nick stating his beliefs and making tongue and check references isn't as dramatic as you're making it seem. Uh, then we have HW. Wow, the bald guy is totally emotional at the truth. The blues totally run the world. And the... I, I don't understand that one. What does... Uh, what does the Baldi have about David for V1DR having his life ruined? Watch Bishop Richard Will Williamson uh, diet D Dr. Kelb. Ironic that Nima calls Nick a pedo when he's Jewish in the Tal Talmud permits SA of girls as young as three. Rasmus uh, asked Nick about uh, the book of Nation of Islam called Secret Relationship. Then we have uh, Luce Gunt. Uh, the, it's crazy to watch a ball guy accuse Nick of liking kids when the people of Mezad P. Pede. Uh, then we have uh, Justin Bride. You're all trying so hard to synchronize. Oh, we already did that one. Just making sure I that one. We did that one. Okay, then we have uh, Richard uh, Strucher. A uh, fact, Nick Fuentes is smarter than anyone else on this panel. Nima, then his religion is 100% example of slander and attacks on people who support Christianity and family. Uh, then we have uh, Mike B. Nick is clearly the guy who got no girls growing up. And we have Ornan Smith TV. Nick Fuentes, uh, he slides cool. over the fact that he has sick, um, sicking his fans. You're doing okay now? You got creators, this. Let's go. Yeah, on the YouTube, including Mr. Okay. Girl, in order to cancel them. He didn't have problems with canceling them. Then we have Charles D. Archery, W. Nick. Uh, then we have uh, Blue Juju, Head High Fuentes in the Lion's Den. God is with you. Fools attacking your character over, uh, he said, uh, she said, women seeking freedom from motherly wife duties, men are seeking to be wiser than God, W. Fuentes. Then we have SD Guy 3030, Mr. Krabs 9000. Then we have Something Wong. Uh, Nick, would you be so more, so, Nick, you would be so much more effective if you sold out, says the female's conservative, who is 30, childless, married, almost like does, doesn't do uh, for money and like OnlyFans. And then we have uh, Glenn Lawrence, ask Nick about, how he does reconcile his differences between the Catholic Ten Commandments and the Bible Ten Commandments. Then we have the no mm. Sir. Nick is extremely effective, and he is the voice of so many young Christian men. We love him, and, we, and the slander will never change that. Then we have uh, Matthew L. Lozana do a series on networking. It would hit hard. Uh, then we have T1 Kiss. Uh, Zerko probably waiting outside the warm fist for the off-brand of Tate. Then we have Mike uh, Nemo, or whatever his name is, terrible content, low IQ, and pulse control. Personal tax, can Adam do a better job moderating outbursts of the devil's advocate? Then we have Kiki Key Dog, ask Richard Strausser about Albert Alexandria. Then we have uh, Dinkley Berg, a uh, shout out to Tyler Russell on Cozy, Total Nick W, Total Jewish L, Christ is King. Then we have da, 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 Charles D. Archery, W Nick. Uh, then we have uh, Kun Yuk, one, maybe Catalina can have married, be married and have kids, but she went to college and is still good looking. Then we have Viserin, Nick Juan, Grunt, Al Ralph has paid 15K by Milo, just like Judas on the payroll of Victor Sharp, Crisis King. Then we have Stay Stress Free. Nick is not an anti-Semitic, Christians love all people. The guy on the right is a perfect example of why people are anti-Semitic though. Then we have Jacuzzi. Uh, Nick was warned about Milo of Ale Ali Alexander, uh, pre predation of teenage boys, specifically because of Nick's position in the young movement. Nick chopped it up to the cost of doing business. Shout out to the 404 gang. Then we have Sprogner and Broggins. As others have said, there is proof Nick Fuentes was warned about Ali Alexander, aka Ali Akbar, by Milo about a few years before, and cancel proof Paul proved his associated with him in months after Ralph won. Then we have last few Wolf's gang. Nima is baiting super chats at this point. I only see disgusting and disgenuous. He's greedily attacking 
uh, for money, it's work, and uh, at what cost? Nick, uncontested W, half of his age, two times IQ. Then we have Visceran, previous super chats are lies. There's no point in Nick uh, to scream about Ali from the rooftops as they're affiliated. This is politics, not gossip concern, troll club. Tell the police about Nick. Um, Tell the police, uh, Nick W. Then we have Freeman. The big problem in the world today is that elites are the most racist tribe in history, wild, unaccountable power, while claiming the protect, the, their protective status of eternal victims that can never be criticized. Then we have Wolf's Gang. We fought for the wrong enemy, General, uh, General George S. Patron. Then we have Yamato. Yeah. Patton, sorry, that's a lot of reading. <laughs> then we have Yamato. It's, it's more entertaining to watch Nick destroy his enemies and educate those who are enlightened, but it is necessary work on nothing less for Nick. Uh, Richard Strasser, uh, Nima Yamin is a model citizen for his people. To understand his people, you need to listen to Can disrespectful and slanderous. This, well, we are the Christians. Uh, then we have Marco. We need Nick and Zerka versus Nima and Destiny. Then we have Hoodie Hippie, the only protected groups that should be in the youth, the other elderly, because we are protected under the law. There are certain uh, protected groups today, and it seems like you can't question or criticize without being sort of bigotry. Then we have uh, Carmel Life Lady, Nick Fuentes for president, Crisis King, no e-girls, not even once. Then we have Pacey, a horror piece. Uh, Nick and uh, no. Nima's guys are coward. Nick allows Nima to hurl personal attacks. Um, borderline defamatory and can be sued. He's allowed or Nick to respond to those accusations. Then we have Alex Parker. Hey, simp. Counterintelligence agents, when does your shift end? Then we have Yo. David Irving is cr crushing by a $30 million fund legal team for being wrong about the couple of facts of the multiple entire books they have thrown the solitary confinement. Totally normal the way they deal with this disagreement. Last one, Chris. I am, uh, of course, I can't read this word, vehemently against. Uh, vehemently. 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 <laughs> I've never we heard all make before. mistakes. Uh, uh, until the ball feminine guys keeps making personal attacks. You guys are hurting your argument by making right, right, Nick right. look good. You're someone's right. father and you act like a child. All right, so that was the last one I was able to get. Thank you guys for the super chats today. Okay, guys, we got to wrap up. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for uh, being here. Thank you for the super chats. Thank yes. you for doing this. Uh, um, you have 10 seconds. Where can people find you guys uh, on the internet? Uh, Nima Yamini on TikTok, uh, YouTube, or Twitter. Okay. Catalina, where can we find you? Catalina Lauf on all social media platforms, and not only fans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Michael Sartain on all social media platforms, and also not only fans. Man, <laughs> boy can dream, though. Boy can dream. Amy? Uh, Amy Dangerfield on YouTube. I mean, I think if you just look up Amy Dangerfield, it'll pop up on Instagram. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. And uh, also Twitter, support platforms that support free speech. Yes. Yeah. Nick F? Nick J. Fuentes on Telegram, Cozy, or Rumble. Okay. Awesome. Um, Natalia Del Valle everywhere, yeah. just Instagram. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, well, Nick, uh, thank you for coming, man. Yes. Thanks for having uh, me. Are there, I think... Genuinely, we had a good discussion. Um, I said at the very beginning, I believe in open discourse. I believe in free speech. Um, there's some th things that we're not going to agree on. There's some things we did agree on. Michael made some points. Catalina made some points. I don't think you and Catalina are going on a date anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But there's she always Amy me. and Nat, right? So, um, <laughs> but I they appreciate you coming on and. Um, the, uh, as of right now, the, the, the stream is still up, and uh, we did it. What we did it, Yay. and um, if you have not subscribed to Valuetainment or Valuetainment Money, two hundred uh, subscribers. We just hit two hundred thousand. Thank you guys. Put in that work. More amazing, awesome, beautiful, sexy, not racist guests Yay. to come on the platform soon enough. That we sounds appreciate boring. Appreciate you uh, <laughs> subscribing uh, and being a part of the show. Thank you to the panel. Thank you to Nick, Michael, Nima, Catalina, Amy, and thank you to you guys for being here. Enjoy the weekend. We out. It's the sauce, guys, baby.